afternoon for college football in Greenville, North Carolina, as the East Carolina Pirates take on the Virginia Tech Hokies at Ficklin Stadium. Hi, everybody. I'm Jeff Charles. I'll be calling the play-by-play -play for you today, working alongside NFL Hall of Famer Willie Lanier of the Kansas City Chiefs, big number 63. And Willie, today, this game has become such a premier rivalry, East Carolina and Virginia Tech. It really has, definitely. As we were saying earlier, it's 3-3 as far as this rivalry is concerned, and it's a matchup of running Virginia Tech against passing ECU. As we know, ECU put it up 77 times against Syracuse last week. That was really amazing. East Carolina has won three of the five games since the series was resumed in 1987. We look at the key players right after this timeout. Let's do it. Welcome to Walk Over by John Deere and your local John Deere dealers. Nothing runs like a deer. By CarQuest. You'll find it at CarQuest. And by Pepsi. Gotta have it. Welcome back to Ficklin Stadium. Virginia Tech loves to run the football. They only threw the ball 11 times last week against James Madison. And Tony Kennedy is an outstanding back, Willie, for this Virginia Tech football team. Yeah, and as we had said last week that the Virginia Tech offense is geared around running. Kennedy has been performing well for them. So we expect them to continue to go with that kind of running game today to establish their offensive patterns. Von Hebron runs uh, at that tailback spot as well. And they're almost carbon copies of each other. Yeah, and what you always want is to have two backs that can complement one another it created a lot of problems for the defense with that combination it gives them everything they need to try to create a lot of problems with four three that east carolina will play today it's the running game of virginia tech but it's the air game of the east carolina pirates and sean mcconnell the senior will get to start he was 12 of 24 last week and willie he's a junior college transfer well i think one of the things of course with a junior college transfer is that you get some experience coming in and with that kind of experience able to step up give you the kind of talent that you need to have at the position it lets you continue to get your game going as well as you can. The man of the future, though, for East Carolina is Michael Anderson. Michael is the younger brother of Willie Anderson of the San Antonio Spurs. He really aired it out last week, Willie. He threw it 52 times. Well, when, as you said, when you throw it that many times, it gives you a chance to really get a feel for your skill, and you aren't going to throw it unless your coach thinks you can get something done with it. He has a great arm, and he really is the quarterback of the future, and he loves to throw the ball, and so do the Pirates. We're coming right back to Ficklin Stadium after this timeout. Welcome back to Ficklin Stadium in Greenville, North Carolina. The East Carolina Pirates and the Virginia Tech Hokies manning the sideline for us today is Brian Bailey. And Brian, what a great rivalry this game has turned into. In Virginia Tech, the series stands at 3-3 with the Pirates winning last year in Blacksburg. Ironically, East Carolina is known for offense, but last year the defense made a big play. Greg Grandison intercepts the pass, goes all the way for the touchdown, some 95 yards, and the Pirates go one for the 24-17 win. The Pirates are getting ready to come on the field right now, and this place is rocking. Jeff? Thanks, Brian. We'll be looking forward to your reports as we continue along today. Virginia Tech, it's really no secret what the Hokies want to do in this football game. They love to run the football. We talked about it. They only threw 11 times against James Madison last week. Ball possession, they need to defend East Carolina's passing game, which is one of the outstanding passing games in the country. And, of course, Willie, they can't give up the big play today either. Well, I think that's always a problem for any kind of running offense because it takes them a lot of time to get their scores on the board and you can't have a situation where a team that you're playing a passing team can score quickly against you so they have to be able to control that east carolina needs to slow down that rushing game of virginia tech they need to establish a running game early themselves and they certainly need to pick up the blitz of virginia tech because we expect virginia tech to come blitzing with that eight-man front that wide tackle six defense that they play against the pirates here today Boy, what a beautiful day it is for football here in Greenville. Clear skies, bright blue skies and sunshine. The temperature is 74 degrees. The wind is out of the north-northeast at 8 miles per hour. And, Willie, just a gorgeous day. Boy, I'll tell you, if you can't get into a football game on a day like this, there's something wrong with you. You're right about that. It's just fantastic coming down. Great weather, as you said, and tremendous enthusiasm for this Pirate football program. So it's an outstanding day for college football down here in Greenville this afternoon. No question about that. The Pirates looking to rebound from a loss to Syracuse last week. 
42-21 was the final score, and Virginia Tech, of course, uh, defeated James Madison last week. The Hokies exploded for 49 points in that game over the 1AA Dukes and won it by the final score of 49-20. East Carolina had a record attendance last week at Ficklin Stadium, an all-time record, 36,500 packed into Ficklin Stadium, which seats 35,000. As we take a look at the officials in today's game, of course, uh, when you look at the officials, East Carolina is now out of the Independent Football Alliance, and Virginia Tech is out of the Big East, so we will have a split crew here today at Ficklin Stadium. The Pirates will be receiving, and Virginia Tech will be kicking off. Morris Foreman is back deep for East Carolina. He did a great job as a freshman last week returning kicks. And he's back there with Cedric Van Buren. We're just about ready to kick this one off, and we just about have a standing room on the ground here as Brian Reeves kicks it off for Virginia Tech. It's a high end-over-end -end kick, and it's Morris Foreman at the three. To the five, to the 10, 15 up to about the 19-yard line, and Virginia Tech does a very nice job getting downfield and making the tackle on the freshman from Farmville, North Carolina, Dwayne Knight on the kick team. And, Willie, anytime you can keep people from the 20-yard line, your kick team did an outstanding job. That's true, and statistically, one thing that coaches always talk about is where you start your possessions as far as the opportunity to score. So a five-yard difference or 10-yard difference can become major in terms of reducing those opportunities to score for an offense. Sean McConnell will start for East Carolina at the quarterback spot, as you say him, and the handoff first man through Junior Smith, and he goes absolutely nowhere. Jerome Preston made the tackle for Virginia Tech. Preston is the real stud as far as that defensive front is concerned for the Hokies. For East Carolina, Sean McConnell starts at quarterback. Van Buren, the fullback. Morris Letcher, the flanker. Batson is the H-back, as they call him in this offense. Driver, the split end. And Carlester Cooper Jr. is the tight end. Up front, it's Averett, Tillman, Leaphart, Crawford, and Wilson from left to right across that front line. Only a gain of one for Junior Smith. It is second down and nine. As the Pirates come to the line of scrimmage, just underway from Greenville. McConnell keeps it himself. And it's Cedric Van Duren across the 25 to about the 26 yard line on the handoff. Very nice play selection. You had a fake reverse. Quarterback kept the ball, got a good delivery, good catch, and picks up a. Cedric Van Duren. Let's watch it on the replay, Willie. Good fake that time, and then. East Carolina actually calls these handoffs, even though they're passes, they're little short passes to the backs. Well, it can work as well as a handoff to get that kind of catch and give you now third and two on this first possession. Third down, two possession play for the Pirates of the 27-yard line. This time the eye, we're seeing a two-back set today. Didn't see it much last week. Here's Junior Smith on the carry, and the little guy's got the first down for East Carolina to almost the 30-yard line. He's one of those little guys, Willie. He's only 5'6", 180. He's a mighty might. He bench presses 335 pounds. And it's great to have that kind of outside quickness on your offensive kind of patterns. They've run inside. They've run a toss, as you said. And now they've run a toss to him that picked up the first down. How about those defensive ends for Tech? Swarm and Basham at left end and right end. Davis and Preston's the big guy there in the middle on the defensive front. It's Preston, Brown, Burden, Pendleton, the linebackers for Virginia Tech. Pirates with a first and ten situation. McConnell brings them out, throwing right. It's Bats in the H back, and we've got flags down on the field. Pirates had trouble with penalties last week. A number of penalties, a lot of timing penalties against East Carolina and that loss to Syracuse. And unfortunately for Pirate fans, again, a miscue with an illegal procedure call will cost East Carolina five yards here. Just underway from Greenville, no score. The Pirates and the Hokies, this is the rubber game, you might Pirates say, of the series as it's tied at three games apiece. The series began way back in 1956 in, of all places, Bluefield, West Virginia. Tech won that first game 37 to two. First and 15 now for the Pirates. We see the one back set, and they give it to the first man throw. Cedric Van Buren for about two. It'll bring up second down and 13. And Willie, we talked about it early on. The, the problem is that East Carolina didn't run the ball very well. Today they'll try and pass it against the secondary of Tyrone Drakeford, Kirk Alexander, and Stacey Henley. Drakeford is, is the best corner 
in that group and again only three defensive backs in this alignment. But as you said the way they play Tech plays their wide tackle six it becomes a little difficult to run against them anyway because they're very active the seven man they call it in the box. Second and 13 McConnell's back looking over the middle Van Buren was open it went over his head and standing there making the reception at the 35 yard line was the Pirate receiver Carlester Crumpler Jr. I don't know if this was designed this way Willie but it worked anyway. No it appeared that Crumpler just happened to be in the right place at the right time and the defenders were able to secure him to stop him but it worked out very well for East Carolina. Melendez Bird made the tackle for Virginia Tech. It's third and four possession time again for the Pirates. No score. We're just underway in the first period. Two receivers right, one back set, one receiver left. McConnell on third and four is back. Looking over the middle, it is caught, but they're short of the first down marker. Caught by Morris Letcher, the junior college transfer from Coffeyville Community College and out of Kansas City. He caught nine balls last week. Ken Brown and Melendez Bird combined on the tackle for Virginia Tech. Pirates about a yard short here, Willie. They're going to have to kick it away. And of course, always you want to have the receiver make sure he has the proper distance to give you the first down. Unfortunately, it was a little bit short. Good, solid defensive play by Virginia Tech and putting East Carolina now in their first punting situation of the afternoon. Michael Jacobs punted the ball extremely well last week. A redshirt freshman, a 44.3-yard average. Not a very good effort this time. Steve Sanders back deep. For Virginia Tech will allow it to roll inside the 30 down to about the 28-yard line. Well, he only 33 yards on that punt. He didn't get into it very well. No, he really didn't. And after you had just mentioned how well he had punted last week, and I think that sometimes tends to happen. It sometimes jinxes him, doesn't it? He, he punted real well last week. Michael was a quarterback in high school. He's 6'5", 204 out of Smithfield. But that, not a very good effort. 11.25 to go. First period, Ficklin Stadium in Greenville. The Pirates and the Hokies, no score. Welcome back to Ficklin Stadium. The Pirates and the Hokies in this Mid-Atlantic rivalry today. And we see Virginia Tech for the first time offensively. And here's the main man, Maurice DeShazo. 6'1", 191, a sophomore out of Stewart, Virginia. Only threw it eight times against Madison last week. The Hokies like to keep it on the ground. Sanders is in motion. Fake to the tailback, and here's DeShazo. He's going to throw. Man is open, he catches the ball at the 35-yard line. Down the far sideline is Antonio Freeman, who caught three passes last week, one for 69 yards, and a little wrinkle for Frank Beamer here. Well, we expected the Hokies to come out and throw, or run, and they came out and threw the first time. That's a really a good way to start the game and go against your script, because with the Shazo rolling out, great catch bobble, but made the outstanding catch and picked up a tremendous first down to get this game started and now have them down the 22 yard line of East Carolina. First and 10 Virginia Tech at the East Carolina 23 yard line. DeShazo is checking off. He has him in the eye and a handoff goes to Von Hebron. He tries to go to the right side and got a couple. Damian McMahon on that right side and Verniel helped to open that hole for Virginia Tech. DeShazo at quarterback. Poindexter the fullback. Hebron starts today. We'll see a lot of Tony Kennedy. Sanders is very fast at that one wide out spot, and so is Antonio Freeman, the big tight end, John Burke. They don't throw to him very much in this offense. Receivers again go out wide left. Sanders and Freeman. Here's DeShazo. Hand off, first man through, gets a couple of yards, and that's about it. Mark Poindexter, the fullback, gets the carry. Poindexter had 61 yards last week. Pretty much a straight ahead play. One thing about East Carolina's defense, they have to really attack the ball a lot more because they have a rather small defensive line. They really do. Linebackers you see there, Lewis, Jones, and Davis. Jones starting today because Jerry Dillon is injured. Greg Floyd, Travis Render in the backfield and his mates. Third down, six possession play, Virginia Tech at the East Carolina 18-yard line. They're in the eye. And our first man through, and the Pirates stuff him right at the line of scrimmage. Eric Myers and Tony Davis. And Willie, as an old linebacker, you can appreciate the hit they put on there. That's the way to play defense. You can watch the defensive lineman come off on this play, get into him, 53, nowhere to go. And that's the way you have to play defense. Tony Davis, outstanding. He's playing that spot that Robert Jones played last year, the number one pick of the Dallas Cowboys. And we're going to see a field goal attempt now for Virginia Tech. They'll spot it down at the 23-yard line, a 33-yard attempt for Ryan Williams, his first of the year, straight on kicker. It is up. And it is good. Ryan Williams hits from 33 yards out. And it's a 3-0 lead for Virginia Tech. As Williams, quite a story in his own right. We'll talk about that a little bit later on with Brian Bailey on the sideline today. 
Virginia Tech three, East Carolina nothing, 9.34 to play in the first period. We're coming right back. Virginia Tech kicker Ryan Williams wears a special shoe, and our man on the sideline, Brian Bailey, will tell us all about it, Brian. His foot was severed at the age of five years, and he really didn't think he'd have a chance to play college football, but he's got a strong leg. They built this shoe much like Tom Dempsey's from the NFL. Dempsey has the NFL record with a 63-yarder, and Ryan Williams is doing just fine. Well, he nailed that first one to put the Hokies ahead, 3-0, and now Reeves will kick off. Williams does not kick off, Reeves does, and he'll kick off for the second time already here in the first period. Van Buren and Foreman are back deep. Morris Foreman, three yards deep, decides to nail in the end zone, and the Pirates will have it at the 20-yard line. Willie, that's quite a story. The young man has really overcome a lot of adversity and being able to kick. Yeah, and having an opportunity to be playing at the same time that Dempsey was able to kick that record 63-yard field goal, I think it was against Detroit, New Orleans Saints when he kicked it, and having the same kind of problem is an outstanding tribute to his kind of skill. Pirates with the ball for the second time. Sean McConnell at quarterback. We'll see Michael Anderson probably more here today than McConnell, but McConnell will play at least the first two series. The senior out of Downey, California. Turns, handoff, first man through, and Junior Smith is hit and dropped after a gain of about a yard. Bernard Basham made the tackle for Virginia Tech. Got to love those defensive ends, uh, Willie. Basham yeah, really and Swarm, do. those defensive ends for the Hokies. And Basham really closes down quickly here to make this stop. You think there's an opening there and gets back to the line of scrimmage and he's able to time up for no game. Bernard's a big guy, 6'5", playing at one of those end spots. He's out of Roto. Second and nine. Pirates with the ball. It's Junior Smith again, and again, he is not dead in his tracks as the Hokies really came after him. It was Melendez Bird and Jerome Preston. Well, he's such a little guy, boy, they, they can really tee off on him Yeah, sometime. they can. It almost looked like a face mask in the way he spun around. And I think it was a face mask, but the officials apparently missed that call. Well, let's see if we can see it from this angle. Yeah, it looked like it, didn't it? Yes, it was. And it looked like it was Don Davis, the guilty party, who got away with it. Third down and nine. Receivers out wide left. McConnell deep drop looking left. Throwing over the middle. It is caught by Zofie. At the 30-yard line, he tried to get to that first down marker. It's going to pull close. Stacy Henley was there, so was P.J. Preston. I think he made it in his outstanding move on his part to make sure he ran the pattern with the proper distance for a first down reception if he caught it. Here's McConnell. Zofi is the Fred Bullitt in the cough, you might say, uh, Willie of the East Carolina Pirates. He runs extremely good routes, and he has great hands. There he is. And he was right across the line. He needed to get to the 30. A little bit over 30, he was there for their first down. Very heady play by Zofi. Knew where he had to get and did it. There's a quick out to the left side. And a ball carrier getting away to the 35 to the 36-yard line. Gain of six for Derek Betson, the freshman out of Miami, who caught a touchdown pass last week against Syracuse. It was Ken Brown who made the tackle for Tech. Brown let him in tackles last week in their opener. Well, Brown came over and made a very nice tackle on this play because it appeared the way it was starting to open up that he might have had a chance to get a lot more yardage on that play. Here's Derek Batson. A lot of speed out of Miami. Second down and four. Two receivers right, one left. One back set. Second and four from the 27-yard line. Pirates keep it on the ground, and they've got the first down right up the middle. That time, Cedric Van Buren got the carry. For the first down, Melendez Bird made the hit. That's what the Pirates have to do here today, Willie. They've got to establish a running game. Yeah, they really have. This hole opened up very well for Van Buren. He was able to break almost an arm tackle, picked up a lot of additional yardage, but they're running the ball and executing extremely well. Cedric had 39 yards last week, and that was the best total of any ECU rusher. They didn't have much of a ground game at all. First and 10, Pirates on the move now to 44, their own 44, 3-0 Virginia Tech. And our first man through, and bang, as he hit and hit down in a hurry, and it's Cedric Van Buren again. Virginia Tech had Jerome Preston and Don Davis collaborating on the tackle. Preston's playing with a hand injury today. He's coming off reconstructive oh, wow. knee surgery from last year. And it appears that the offensive approaches have changed for these teams. We were expecting East Carolina to be throwing the ball a lot. They're running it a lot, and of course, Tech started with a pass, so it'll be interesting to see how this continues as far as their philosophy is concerned. 
Receivers left and right, one back set, handoff, man up the middle on the draw, has got a opening across the 50-yard line. It's Junior Smith quickly into the Tech secondary to the 45-yard line. That time, a little water bug got through there, Willie. And extremely well done as far as the play was concerned. We'll take a look at it on replay, and you can see how the quarterback, almost on a delayed draw, he steps up the field and opens up well for them. And, of course, Tech has to be wondering how long they're going to continue to stay with this kind of running attack. There's Junior on a different angle up the middle. And, again, he had a tough week last week. He only had six yards on seven carries against a very good Syracuse defense. Yeah, Stacy Henley was able to come across and finally secure him. They bring the chains across the field for a measurement here. And the Pirates are just inches short. It's going to bring up a third and less than one at the Virginia Tech 46-yard line. Zofi and Batson left. Third and less than one. They'll get down in the trenches on this one. McConnell brings them out. McConnell, the quarterback keeper, and he's got it. He's across the 45, headlong to about the 44-yard line. The senior picks up the first down. Chapman and Pendleton made the tackle for Frank Beamer's Oakies. Willie, always good with that quarterback and pick up that short yardage. Yes, it is. You need a guy who has some size and is pretty tough. All they did was take the snap, put his head down, drive forward, and got that first down to keep them alive with this drive. It was a nice drive they have on this, this possession. Hokies three, Pirates nothing. ECU driving, 5.58 to go, first period. McConnell at the control. Hand off, it's Junior Smith breaking the tackle. 40, 35 to the 32-yard line. That was a well-executed off-tackle play, and it appears East Carolina has really looked a little bit differently at how they were going to attack Virginia Tech in this game. Well, we talked about them needing to establish a running game early, and boy, that's what they've come out and tried to run the football here today. A little bit of a misdirection, cut back, off-tackle extremely well. Dwayne Knight came over and made a fine tackle for Virginia Tech. Junior Smith, just a sophomore out of Fayetteville. They think he's going to be something special here. A lot of Division I schools overlooked him because he's so small. He's got it again. Here he comes. This time, not too much. He got about a yard. Tech did a good job of stringing that play out to this near sideline. He picked up about a yard. We'll call it second down and nine. Bird and Preston made the tackle. Well, the way they play that wide tackle six, they're able to get a field, getting a little, lot more pressure now after having to accept the fact that East Carolina is currently going to run the ball a lot more today than they normally do. Second down and eight. 4.58 to go first period. Hokies three, Pirates nothing. Again, Smith stays in the backfield. Two receivers left. Zofi out right. McConnell looking, throwing. Crumpler's out there and just overthrew him at the 10-yard line. The big Pirate tight end who is the son of one of the all-time great players at ECU, Carlester Crumpler Sr. This is Carlester Crumpler Jr. He's just a little bit bigger than dad. He's 6'6", 250 pounds playing tight end, and Willie, he's got some great size. Yes, he does. With that kind of size and good speed and great hands, you give the quarterback a heck of a target, but the ball was just a little bit high on that last play. Third down and eight. Possession play, big play for the Pirates. Receivers left and right again. One back set. Crumpler, the tight end, in motion to the far side. McConnell on third and eight. Throws, and it is almost picked off. It was in and out of the hands of Stacy Henley. And Willie, if he hangs on, he's maybe got six points the other way. There's no question about it. You couldn't have been any closer to intercepting a ball than that. It appeared, and we take a look at on replay, that it must have gone right through his hands. Quarterback sets up well. Henley makes a great break on the ball, and it... You wonder what happened on it, but it sure would have been did. an outstanding play. Hanley's out of Woodbridge, 6 feet, 178, sophomore, one of the young players, and now the Pirates will attempt to tie this. It's a 37-yard line spot, a 47-yard attempt for Deke Owens. He was 0 for 1 last week. Snap, ball down, kick is up from 47, and it is no good. No good from 47 yards out as the drive stalls for East Carolina. And with 4.39 to go in the first period, the Hokies have a 3-0 lead as Virginia Tech's offense comes back onto the field, and the Pirate defense is back out here at just about sold out Ficklin Stadium. This is a great sight here today, Willie, isn't it? Look at the purple and gold in the stands here. And, and you, as you said, it appears to be purple and gold all around here, and there's an outstanding view from up here in the press box watching the game today. 
to Shazo for his second series for Tech. Keeps it. And DeShazo with some very nifty ball handling. Moves the ball to the 35-yard line, a gain of five yards. Ernie Lewis made the tackle. Second down and five coming up for Virginia Tech. DeShazo played a wideout for the Hokies last year. He finally got to some quarterback experience against Virginia. The Cavaliers blew the Hokies out last year, 38 to nothing in their last ball game of the season. And DeShazo got a chance to play QB. Will Fewer played quarterback for them last year. Now with the Chicago Bears. Here's the handoff, and the Pirates do a nice job defending that play. Myers swung it out from his end spot. Davis was also there, and Vaughn Hebron is tackled after a yard game. Yeah, Vaughn Hebron was trying to pick up some nice yardage from Tech, but Davis, as you said, out of his 4-3 linebacking position, was able to attack the play extremely well for only one or two yard gain. You yeah. see Davis come over here, made a, came through the line, and really tied him up well on that play. Third down and five to Shazo's back, pumping right, looking back, left. They've got the screen set up to Hebron, and it's open. To the 40, to the 45, he's got the first down at the 47-yard line. Well, an excellent play call. They had that thing set up. It perfectly. really was, and it appears that East Carolina had a very hard pass rush on, and the screen play was the best thing to have against that. And Davis it, and Render came over. You see, no one is really there. A lot of great blocking, and I was just impressed with the speed of Davis coming out of his linebacker position to come over and make the play, along with Travis Render for East Carolina. Hebron with 98 yards, led the Hokies in rushing last week. First and 10, Hokies on the move at the 47-yard line. Here's the Shazo on the keeper, and he's got a big hole. Across the 50, across the 45, down to the 42-yard line. The Shazo picks up about 11 more. He should have another first down. Nice run by the Tech quarterback. This kid's pretty quick, Willie. Obviously a very talented young man at quarterback. He fakes it, cuts up field and Greg Grandison will come over to make the tackle, but he creates a heck of a lot of problems for a defense with those kinds of skills. Maurice DeShazo, the Hokies were tickled to death to get him out of high school. He was highly recruited from Stewart, Virginia. Second down, less than one. Pumping right, looking back left. DeShazo is under attack, and he throws that one away. A good rush put on by the Pirates, led by Bernard Carter out of Tallahassee, Florida. That was the kind of pressure you have to put on a quarterback with those kinds of skills. He had a chance to try to set up a screen, look to the other side with a flare that was covered, and fortunately, he was able to have to throw incompletion because of that great pressure by East Carolina. Virginia Tech three, East Carolina nothing, 2.32 to play in the first period. Pirates have South Carolina in Columbia next Saturday night, and the Hokies Back to Big East Wars next week against Temple in Philadelphia. Man in motion. Here's DeShazo. Hand off left side. Hebron to the 40-yard line. Got about three. Pirates did a pretty good job of defending that run. And that was the first time the Tech ran a double tight end offense to give them a little bit more up front in terms of their matchups with that somewhat small defensive line of East Carolina. Ernie Lewis came over and made the tackle. So the tackle missed at the line of scrimmage, but Lewis is there again to make an inside solid tackle for East Carolina. First and 10, up for the first down for Virginia Tech, driving at the Pirate 40-yard line. Two back set this time, back to pass. DeShazo hits his man across the 35, down to about the 31-yard line. It's Mike Hodges coming out of the backfield. Hodges out of Yonkers, New York. Hodges ran a very nice pattern coming through the line, and you see Lewis pick him up. Great catch, picked up good yardage, but the linebacker made a good play in staying with him and being a part of the tackle on that play. Jerry Dillon, we talked about Jerry earlier, playing with a fractured thumb in there, made that tackle. He's playing hurt today. Nine-yard pickup, second down and one. And in motion to this side is Sanders. Hand off up the middle, first down yardage for Virginia Tech inside the 30 down to about the 28-yard line. Tony Kennedy got the carry. Tony, Tony got a little shaken Kennedy. up against James Madison last week. He was slow a couple of days in practice this week. Took a blow on the back of the knee, had a little fluid. Boy, he's worn the Pirates out of the past in this series. It's somewhat of a scissors action. One back goes to one side, and Kennedy comes back to the other the first time they run this play against East Carolina, but didn't need much for the first down. First and 10, Hokies at the Pirate, 29-yard line. Here's... 
Kennedy, and he is hit and hit hard. After a gain of a couple of yards, he was really drilled. That's kind of solid tackle you like to have. You see the offensive guard pulling to his right, Kennedy coming around that end, and then he's met and goes nowhere. And that's the kind of solid tackle that you hope to see and get from your defense. That's Jerry Dillon playing with that bad thumb today. Well, didn't Met hurt Kennedy. him on that play. No, Met Kennedy head on, second down and nine. High formation, fumble on the snap, ball's loose on the turf. Let's see if Jim Pine got back on it. The All-America candidate at center for Virginia Tech as they unpile and the Hokies dodged a bullet here, Willie. They managed to get back on it. It was just a missed exchange at the point of attack. As you say, they were able to secure it. But those kind of things can happen in games and really give you an advantage when you find yourself with this kind of drive uh, that Tech has had against ECU. That's the end of the first period of play from sold out Ficklin Stadium in Greenville, North Carolina. After one, it's Virginia Tech three and East Carolina nothing. Brian Bailey's on the sideline. Brian? Jeff, East Carolina is about 50-50 as far as their game plan is concerned. They have been able to establish a running game, but they still haven't proven they can stop Virginia Tech on the ground, and this drive pretty much proves it. That's the key coming into this ball game. He really didn't have to be a rocket scientist to figure it out. The Pirates need to stop the Hokie ground game here today. They've had a heck of a time in this series over the years in stopping it. The Shazo fakes, keeps, dodges, and gets a couple of yards to about the 28. And you could see the defense of East Carolina attacking with a little bit more aggressiveness, adding a blitz to it because they realize they do have to do something differently to try to stop this Hokie running attack. It was a fake by DeShazo. He kept the ball, made pretty good cuts, but then was you know, finally secured. Ernie Lewis made the tackle, sets up fourth down and eight, and Ryan Williams for the second time will attempt a field goal for Virginia Tech. They're going to spot it down at the 33. It will be a 43-yard attempt. He's a straight-on kicker, and he's almost got it in the middle of the field. From 43, Ryan Williams' kick is no good. Willie, it went just a little bit to the left side. Looks good sometimes for the press box, but it's a different angle down on the field, and yep, he hooked right. it to the left. Virginia Tech, three. Pirates, nothing. 14-13 to go. First half. We're coming right back to Greenville. It's takeover offensively following the missed 43-yard field goal by Ryan Williams, and we see Michael Anderson at the controls for the first time. Anderson with a handoff. It's Van Buren breaking into the secondary to about the 36-yard line, a gain of about seven or eight yards on that carry by Cedric Van Buren. Brown and Preston made the tackle. This telecast is an exclusive presentation of Flawstone Productions in association with the Pirate Sports Television Network. Any use, reuse, or other transmission of this telecast without the written consent of Flawstone Productions and the Pirate Sports Television Network is prohibited. Receivers left and right. McConnell, or rather Anderson for his first throw. He's got a man out there and overthrows his intended receiver. At the 20-yard line, it was Carlos Blake, the fastest man on the Pirate team. He runs a 4-3-40, but Anderson, Willie, really aired that thing out, didn't he? Yes, he did, and it was good to see them finally decide to stretch the field. They've had a few passing plays, but they haven't really thrown the ball as deep as we had expected uh, once we uh, came into this game today. Third and one, let's see how the Pirates play it here. They gambled on second and one and went deep. Anderson threw it 52 times last week. He was 24 of 52, 48%. Pitch, Van Buren, or Smith with the first down. To the near sideline, Junior Smith, a little scat back out of Fayetteville. Junior Smith, around the left end. Rusty Pendleton pushed him out of bounds on this near sideline. A late indication by the official. But it looks like the Pirates have picked it up. We'll have to wait and see for sure. They go to the short side of the field here, Willem. Yes, nice toss play. He was able to get as much yardage as he could going into that sideline, but was able to, as you said, pick up that first down for East Carolina. Well, the Pirates have to be pleased that they've been able to run the football here in the first down. That was a question mark coming in. They've been able to run the football fairly effectively here against Virginia Tech. They're going to try and run it again. Here's Junior Smith. He's got a man in front. 
to the 40, broke a tackle to the 45, broke another to the 47-yard line. Kirk Alexander made the tackle. Willie, they're getting the little guy out now with some daylight in front of him. Here. Yeah, they really are, and, and you'll see on this play as he runs the sweep to the right side of their offense that he has good blocking out in front by Cedric Van Buren, and he's able to pick up almost 10 yards on that play. And you see Van Buren, who gets a good block, he's able to offset one of these tackles, made him miss, and showed good power and good balance in being able to pick up nine yards on that play. Van Buren had a nine-yard run earlier in this series, and now a nine-yard run from Junior Smith, and it's second down and one at the 46. Anderson, play action, he's gonna go for it all. Man is out there, double covered, a collision. And no flag as the Hokies had that one defended well. Carlos Blake, the intended receiver, and Henley and Alexander back deep. Jimmy Tech with outstanding coverage, Will. Yes, and you can see very clearly that Michael Anderson has an outstanding throwing arm, and he likes to go deep with it. And I think as they continue to run their offense, mixing up the run as well as the pass play, he'll get his timing down a little bit better and start maybe connecting. It's Hokies three, Pirates nothing. 12.40 to go, second period. Anderson's a big kid. They list him at 6'4 and a half, but you see him out there. He looks like he's about 6'6, six, six, and he weighs right at 230. He's out of Atlanta, just a sophomore. Backed up Jeff Blake last year. There's a slant. It's caught by Clayton Driver to the 36-yard line. 22 yards on the pass play to Clayton Driver. Kirk Alexander made the tackle. Pretty play here. Yeah, Anderson drops straight back. Nice slant play by Driver. On in stride, and that's the kind of place you want to hit it. You don't want him to come in further in toward the middle of the field. You give it to him on his break, and Anderson did that. Clayton's got great hands. Ten touchdown catches last year for the Pirates. Led East Carolina in that category. Tied a school record. First down and ten. Pirates with the ball. Driving on the Hokies at the 36-yard line. Van Buren gets away to the 30, down to about the 27-yard line. About eight or nine more for Cedric Van Buren. It was Chapman and Alexander, the tackle for the Hokies, and a very impressive drive going now for the Pirates. Oh, it really is. Van Buren kept his balance well on this play. A little bit of a misdirection was able to get away from that tackle, stayed upfield for about another five or six yards before the Hokies were able to really converge and secure him with that nine-yard gain. Second and one, and again, another nine-yard pickup. That's three nine-yard runs in this series. Anderson, short drop, looking, man open, it's caught! Great catch at the five-yard line. Oh, what a catch by Derek Batson. The freshman out of Miami, great hand. Great hands, great catch, it was a very nice touch by Michael Anderson, and he has to put it over one of the defensive backs' outstretched hands, and he laid it in there perfectly. Great throw, great catch. And a solid tackle by Kurt Alexander, but he still was able to hold on to the ball. To the three-yard line of Virginia Tech. It's first and goal. Pirates at the three. We'll see East Carolina in the power eye this time. Anderson has come off the bench and sparked his football team. Pitch to Junior Smith. A win behind him. The ball's on the turf, and Virginia Tech has the football. Virginia Tech has come up with the turnover. Rusty Pendleton, big play for the Hokies defensively. Oh, very, very big play, but it occurred because of on the toss, as you said, the ball is behind the running back. He dives for it, not able to secure it, and one of the Hokies comes over and is able to stem the tide of what was a great drive by East Carolina. A shame for the Pirates that they couldn't convert after moving that football right down the field and a turnover against East Carolina, gives the ball to Virginia Tech at the nine yard line. Big, big play in this game to this point. DeShazo, handoff, up the middle, only about two yards. Mike Hodges carried the ball for Virginia Tech and Zion Kumalai made the tackle for the Pirates. Well, this game is really settled down into a knockdown, drag out affair. Here, Willie, only 3 nothing, 10.50 to go in the first half. It really has. It's been a, such a great mix of running and passing. And, of course, that great drive of East Carolina a moment ago. So it's really moving ahead in, in a, a very exciting manner. Second down and seven. DeShazo fakes. Tosses. Caught at the 15 to the 20. Ball carried to about the 21, maybe the 22-yard line. Morris Foreman came up and made the tackle. Quarterback Maurice DeShazo's pass. On Hodges. Fullback Mike Hodges. And you start to see more plays selection
coming into the game by both teams, and I think that really shows you the kind of execution, the comfort that the coaches are with the additional plays they are having a team's run. Frank Beamer. Now in his sixth year as the head coach of the Virginia Tech Hokies. Steve Logan, the rookie mentor here of the East Carolina Pirates. First down and 10 at the 21-yard line. Here's DeShazo being chased by Myers. Gets away, far sideline, being run out of bounds by Tony Davis at the 20-yard line. May have been a broken play. DeShazo was on the move to the far sideline. Couldn't find anybody open. A part of it is also probably very good coverage by the defensive backs of East Carolina. And Davis stayed in very, very good pursuit, which didn't allow DeShazo time to get set to prepare himself to throw the ball. And with that kind of pursuit and good coverage, he's able to make a very good play for East Carolina. Second down, nine yards to go. Virginia Tech at its own 22. DeShazo sprinting out right again. Throwing on the run, and it's incomplete at the 31-yard line. Greg Crittenden couldn't hang on. Big hit made by Greg Floyd. Excellent defensive play by the Pirate corner. The junior out of Anderson, South Carolina. And Floyd made an outstanding move on the ball, and you'll see once he breaks for the ball, he uses his left hand to be able to hit it, and in that way he can knock the ball away without having to take the risk of interference on the play. Big play now for the Hokies, third down and nine, their own 22. 9.58 to play first half, Tech with a 3-0 lead. We've had two field goal attempts by Virginia Tech, Ryan Williams one for two, Deke Owens just a 47-yarder for the Pirates on the scoring attempt. Here's DeShazo faking, Carter's after him, he gets away, throws on the run, and it is incomplete at the 34-yard line. Hokies will have to punt, fourth down and nine, Crittenden the intended receiver, and Garrett Beasley and Greg Floyd defended on the play. It appears that the Shazo does a lot better when he's dropping straight back, but they, for some reason, decided to run a lot more rollout patterns, and he hasn't been quite as effective. Myers have done a good job putting some pressure on him. They wanted to do that heading into the game. Here's Colley to kick it away. Colley with a 41-point Eight average with a high kick line of scrimmage. The 22 fair catch called for and taken by Morris Fletcher at the 38-yard line. Pirate offense comes back out onto the field. 9.42 to go, first half. Virginia Tech three, East Carolina nothing. We're coming back to Greenville, North Carolina in beautiful Pickland Stadium after this. Pirate fans excited here in Greenville at Pickland Stadium. East Carolina took over 25,000 people to the Peach Bowl last year in their victory over North Carolina State. They love the Pirates here in Eastern North Carolina. Pirates take over offensively. Here's Anderson in for a second series. Throws and it's caught by Zofi at the 49-yard line. A pickup of 11 yards. Kirk Alexander made the tackle. Anderson's really been impressive off the bench. He really has, and as he rolls out to his right, Zofi runs a shallow crossing pattern, makes a very nice catch for a first down on this possession. As he rolls out, Zofi is coming from his left to his right, makes a catch, sliding down, picks up a first down. First and 10, East Carolina at the 49-yard line. Junior Smith alone set back, receivers left and right. Junior goes to the left side, he broke a tackle to the 50, to the 45, broke another one, laid it on the turf, it's loose. And let's say if Virginia Tech has the ball, it looks like they do, but did they blow the play dead? That's the question. Late signal, it's Virginia Tech ball. The Pirates turn it over for the second time. Stacy Henley recovers the ball for the Hokies. Outstanding play, apparently, until the end of it. And you see him able to cut, makes another move upfield. Being tackled, you can't quite tell the period. It, did, it came out before he was down. Really fighting for more yardage. The ball popped out before he was down giving the ball to Virginia Tech. Two fumbles on two series is something that you hopefully never have happened during the course of the game. Pirates last year in their great season of 11 and one were plus in their turnover margin in double figures. Turned it over twice here today. Shazo handoff, first man through, breaking tackles across the 50. Down to about the 48 yard line into East Carolina territory is Mark Poindexter. Ray Grandison and Fred Walker tackle for East Carolina. Grandison, according to the Sporting News, 
is the leading candidate for the Jim Thorpe Award, which is the award given to the top defensive back in the country. Grandison started his career at Florida, and he was a starter as a freshman in Gainesville, so you know what a talent he is. Transferred to Pearl River Junior College and now on with the Pirates here in his senior year. Second and two following the run. High formation. Receiver in motion to this side is Sanders. DeShazo on the option. Will keep it and turn up field. And he pitches it at the last instant down the far sideline. Is Hebron to the 20-yard line. Ernie Lewis and Greg Grandison made the tackle. A pickup of 28 yards on a real late pitch to Vaughn Hebron. But DeShazo executed the option to perfection. Real late pitch by DeShazo because after he makes his cut upfield, and is diving forward, being tackled before he makes the toss. And after him, Hebron makes that catch and continues downfield, outstanding play, great athletic skill on both players' parts. You don't see that too often. He picked up a good 10, 12 yards or more himself before he pitched that ball. High formation receiver wide right. First and 10, Hokies threatening at the Pirate 20-yard line. Sanders now goes out wide right. The Shazo runs to the right. He's got pressure. Directing traffic, thrown back, and it is incomplete. Tough throw. Willie running right, trying to throw back left. <laughs> yes, it really is. And even though the Shazo is very talented, being under that kind of pressure, running to your right, trying to throw back across your body is extremely difficult to do. And that was obviously the reason why the ball was thrown into the turf. You have to set yourself somewhat and get into position to be able to throw a ball well. And obviously, you can't do it under that kind of pressure. Second down, 10 yards to go. Ball is at the 20-yard line. Tech threatening with a 3-0 lead and 7.48 to go. Here's DeShazo. Option, Quain Dexter. First man through to the 15. He gained about five. Official attendance today at Bickland Stadium, 35,121. The stadium seats 35,000. They brought in some temporary bleachers. And another capacity crowd plus here in Greenville. Third and seven now, Hokies. Threatening at the Pirate, 16-yard line. Big play here for Tech. Third and seven. DeShazo brings them out. A little confusion. Got to watch the play clock down to three seconds to get the playoff. There's the pitch. Hebron goes left, and we've got flags all over the field. Only the second time we've seen penalty flags today. It appeared that the right offensive guard was in motion. I think as, as audibles were being called by Michael Anderson, it caused one of their linemen, of course, to come out of his stance prior to the snap. And the penalty against Virginia Tech will cost the Hokies here with 7.04 to go. Talk about that. Great crowd the Pirates have here today, 36,500 last week. East Carolina averaged 32,000 plus last year, and Virginia Tech had a great crowd for their opener playing 1AA James Madison at Lane Stadium. They had almost 44,000 last week. Third and 12, ball at the 21. Possession play, and DeShazo's looking right. Throwing back left, screen play. Hebron is tackled at the 22 yard line. Great play made by Zion Kumala out of North Farmington, Michigan and Grand Rapids Community College. Thomas Jones was right behind. Well, a good defensive play by the Pirates. It really was. They were trying to set up a screen, but as you said, Zion Kumala read it very well, came over, got in position, and made an outstanding play for East Carolina. There he is, almost had a cutback by Hebron, but he was able to make the tackle. East Carolina. You did good. We practiced his name before we went on the air. Uh, yes, we did. Zion <laughs> <laughs> Kumalai. Now we see a field goal attempt coming up here for Williams. His third of the day. This one is a 39-yard attempt. Far hash mark. It is up, and it is no good. Williams is one for three. Williams misses from 39 yards, and the Hokie drive stalls. 6.03 to go. First half. Virginia Tech three. East Carolina nothing. We're coming back right after this timeout. Michael Anderson back to pass, first and 10. Pirates, man open, caught at the 40 to the 45 to the 47 yard line is Derek Batson, the freshman out of Miami, Florida, as Anderson drills Batson right between the numbers over the middle. Ryan Williams had a tough day, uh, Willie. He's one for three. Yes, he is, and on this kick, it's almost as if though you hit a golf shot that slices 
It got up well, but just saw it continue to fade from the time it was hit. Anderson has been right on the money coming off the bench. He delivers a strike right here to a wide open Derek Batson. Anderson's back again. Deep drop. Here come the Hokies. He steps up in the pocket. He gets away. Broke a tackle and dives forward to about the 50-yard line. A lot of pressure by the Hokie defense realizing they have to try to put pressure on this quarterback because he throws the ball extremely well and can keep his team moving downfield in a hurry. Pendleton covered up on him at about the 48-yard line. Good pressure here by Virginia Tech. Yes, it really was. He was able to escape the first wave, step back up in the pocket, and was able to at least get them back a little bit past the line of scrimmage. Did pick up a couple of yards. It's second down and eight. Letcher's in motion, and Anderson is back. Throws over the middle. It is caught at the 49-yard line. Gain of about two yards, and that's about it. Dwight Linville, the backup tight end, made the catch. Melendez Bird made the tackle. Those two inside linebackers for Virginia Tech, Melendez Bird and Rusty Pendleton, have started 23 consecutive games side by side in that Virginia Tech defense. Their linebackers cover very well because, as you said, Melendez Bird came over and made a very solid tackle on that completion and didn't give up any additional yardage on the tackle. Bird is a walk-on, so it just proves you don't have to have a scholarship to make a big impression. Back to pass on third and six. Here's Anderson stepping up, looking right. He's going to throw right. Man is out there, but he just uh, underthrew him a bit. He had to come back for the ball. Incomplete. P.J. Preston defended on the play, and Dia Hicks, a very talented junior college transfer for the Pirates, couldn't come back and get it. There's Steve Logan in his first year as the head coach of the Pirates, and boy, I'll tell you, what do you do for an encore? <laughs> Bill Lewis left last year. The Pirates have their greatest season in history, 11-1, and one, and Steve uh, left to pick up the slack here in his first year. Here's Jacobs. He almost had a block, but he got a good kick away. Here's Sanders with the return to the 15 to the 20, and man, is he buried right at the 20-yard line. A good, solid hit made by the Virginia Tech player Reggie Robinson, a backup linebacker, really made a good hit on Sanders at the 20-yard line. I know his coach had to be holding his breath because as close as the defenders were to him, I thought he was going to go for a fair catch, but fortunately it worked out very well uh, for him and Virginia Tech on that last play. So the Hokies come out again. Boy, it shows you what we know going into this game. We expected a 35-32 shootout or something, Willie. And here it is, 3-0 with 4.18 yeah, right. to go in the first half. Receivers left and right in the eye. deshazo has been impressive at quarterback for the Hokies. Rolling left. Caught. Hodges out of the backfield. He dropped it. It's loose on the turf. The Pirates have the football. East Carolina gets a Virginia Tech turnover. The first on the Hokies. It was Tony Davis. Out of Boston, the linebacker who came up with a football for East Carolina. Tony Davis has been all over the field this afternoon for East Carolina. Hodges catches the ball and he just drops it. Uh, Davis is there hustling to be able to make the recovery for East Carolina, giving them great field position to offset those two fumbles they had earlier. Willie, Tony Davis was the number one targeted recruit by Ohio State coming out of high school. Well, the way he's played today, I can definitely see why they had him rated so high. Went to junior college out of high school and now on here with East Carolina. Hand off, first man through. It's Cedric Van Buren to about the 25-yard line, a gain of three. It will bring up second down and seven. Preston was there and so was Pendleton. And, Willie, you know, since Anderson's come off the bench, the Hokies really haven't stopped the Pirates. The Pirates have stopped themselves. Yes, they have, and as I mentioned earlier, because of those two fumbles that they had, both of them, one on the three-yard line, the other they were in great position, but he really has this team moving. Second down and eight at the 26, and Anderson's back. He's looking left. He's throwing left. It's caught by Junior Smith out of the backfield to the 20-yard line. Melendez Bird knocks him down after a gain of only about a a yard we could pick up the sound on the sideline I could hear some pirate players Willie Yellen hang on to the ball junior he's had a little trouble hanging on he took that big hit well I can definitely understand them requesting that junior Smith comes out of the backfield he makes a cut to his right the ball is delivered and of course great hands good solid tackle he holds onto the ball and they pick up now a third and eight timeout. but a timeout 308 to play first half Virginia Tech three and East Carolina nothing in the game again that 
Pirates were favored in by one and a half Ladies points. These games have been so close Fort down through this series last year. East Carolina won in Blacksburg. The final score was 24-17. Greg Grandison really helped turn that game around with a 95-yard touchdown return of an interception and really got the Pirates uh, back moving in that game, and they went on to win it 24-17. Brian Bailey's a man on the sideline. Brian? Jeff, the Pirate coaching staff really pleased with their offense moving the football both on the ground and through the air, but the problem is they haven't been able to cash in with a touchdown or at least a field goal. They're not on the board yet. They're getting close again in this drive. Very important drive, Willie, right here. 3.08 to play in the first half. Pirates are down 3-0. They need to convert and get some points here. Yeah, they really do because what you don't want to have happen is the frustration to really start setting in. They find themselves able, able to move between the 20-yard lines, but once you get down close, nothing positive happens. So you want to try to have the confidence maintain itself by getting something out of this drive. If it's only a field goal, but you want to come away with something. Pirates won't be home here at Pickman Stadium until October the 17th. The Cincinnati Bearcats will be here. It will be homecoming, a Cincinnati program that is really improving under Tim Murphy. They got beat by Penn State 81 to nothing last year, and then 24 to 20 was the final score this year. They made some great improvement. There's Frank Beamer, what a terrific guy he is in his sixth year at Virginia Tech, took over for Bill Dooley. And Frank uh, had a fine career at Murray State. Played at Virginia Tech. Third down and two. Ball at the 20-yard line. Anderson's back over the middle, and it's knocked away on a fine defensive play at the 15-yard line. Kirk Alexander knocked it away at the 15. Zofi wanted pass interference. We'll get a look at it here, Willie. Kurt made a nice play on that, and I think Zofi might have had a reason for wanting. No, it was a very, very good play. He just made an outstanding play, came around, got his hand on the ball, and knocked it away. Good play made by Alexander. It really Fourth was. and two, and now the Pirates will try a field goal. They'll spot this one down at the 27, a 37-yard attempt for Deke Owens. He's 0 for 1 today. And they're going to fake it. Jacobs is going to throw. Man, it's wide open. Touchdown, Pirates. On the fake field goal to Cedric Van Buren. Oh, my, what a touchdown that was. Jacobs throws it to Van Buren, and they grab it out of the hat of Steve Logan's playbook. Well, that was a great play because there was no one near him. You hear that saying so often that there was no one near him. But when you see the replay, it is executed so extremely well. Delivers the ball. Nobody. Nobody near him as he crosses the goal line. Nobody in the picture. Jacobs was a high school quarterback. He holds and he punts. He's always a threat to throw the ball. And the Pirates lead 6-3 to three with 2.59 to go in the first half. Nick Owens with the extra point. It's good. Pirates 7. Hokies 3. Willie, you couldn't have drawn that one up any better, could you? No, you really couldn't, and that really becomes one of those great confidence builders for you because at that point in the game where you're trying to get your first points before the end of the first half, you can go for the safe three, but you not only go for it, but you get the seven, and that has to be a great feeling on that sideline now for East Carolina. Again, since Anderson has come in off the bench, the Hokie defense has not been able to stop the East Carolina offense. Let's go down to Brian Bailey. Brian, you had a good look at it. What a pretty play. Makes all of a sudden, East Carolina last week trying to fake punt early in the game didn't work. This time, it was wide open. Unbelievable how open he was. Went on for the touchdown. Here's a look at a replay. Wide open into the end zone for the touchdown, and the Pirates trying to get one into the end zone. Finally do, and now they're on top. That's one for the Pirate highlight film this year. 7-3, Pirates, 2.59 to go first half. Deke Owens will kick it off, and it's Hebron at the 10. 15, 20, 25 to about the 27. Greg Floyd made the tackle for East Carolina. Again, you look back through the years in this series, and big plays like that have characterized this series. A couple of years ago here at Ficklin Stadium, the Pirates hit a pass play and what looked to be a draw, a man was wide open, much like Cedric Van Buren was on that play. It was a pass play uh, on play action. 
Didn't take the Pirates long. 201 to score. Five plays and 72 yards. Van Buren, 20-yard pass from Jacobs. First and 10. Hokies at the 28-yard line. The Shazo with a handoff to about the 34-yard line. Got about five or six to the ball carrier. Kumalai made the tackle on Mike Hodges. Hodges is getting a lot of work. Yes, he is. That was, that was a nice off-tackle play. Really kept a lot of leg drive. Was able to pick up that four or five yards for Virginia Tech. Second down and six. Shazo rolling right, throwing on the run. He's got a man wide open. It's Sanders, and he overthrows him. He had two steps on the defender, Fred Walker, and that was six of that throw is on the money to Steve Sanders, and it was overthrown. It certainly is, and one thing Fred Walker's going to have to think about is that he can't allow himself to ever look in the backfield like that, thinking the play is going to be thrown somewhere underneath. You stress that constantly defensive backs because it only takes a moment. It only takes a moment to have that, that receiver behind you and giving you a six, seven point opportunity for the opponent. He's at least four or five yards behind on that play. Billy Height, the offensive coordinator at Virginia Tech. Billy was with Bill Dooley for many, many years. Played for Bill Dooley at North Carolina. On at Virginia Tech as an assistant from there for a number of years. Rolling right, back to pass. DeShazo in trouble, he's going down. Balls on the turf. Scrambled for Pirate football at the 23-yard line of Virginia Tech. Eric Myers has the ball for ECU. Willie, how the momentum has changed in this game. It really has because on that rollout of the Shazo, you saw the defensive end, I think it was number 88, who was able to fight through a block and get great position. No, it was 86. He was able to fight through a block, get great position, Jerry and come Dillon. back and make the play. So it was Walter Scott, number 96, yes, 96. Who, who was able to knock the ball away. Take it in there. Now with 2.18 to go, Pirates back on offense at the 23-yard line. Anderson looks, throws. It's incomplete. The flag goes down at the line of scrimmage. Take your time. D.J. Preston defended on the play as the flag flies. Hold the call against the Pirates. Mike Leiter, two pass. driver, hold in your feet. Willie, one gets the feeling here the Pirates have the Hokies on the ropes a little bit right now. Yeah, they really do, and you have to think about the fact that since Anderson came into the game, he's continued to have a number of drives. He's kept that defense on the field. They've had a lot of different play selection, which really keeps them thinking a lot. One small error, they can be back in position to try to get another score before the end of this half. First down. There's the call by the official. Holding. Against the Pirates, sets the ball back to the 37-yard line. Well, the Pirates' sideline is certainly a lot more excited now than they were about five minutes ago. <laughs> Clayton Driver's in motion, and Anderson is back. He's looking left. He throws over the middle, and it is incomplete. He tried to go to Batson. Rusty Pendleton. Defended on the play. They're really throwing the ball to bats in a lot. He's just a freshman out of Miami, and he started today. Ronnie Williams, the usual starter at that H-back spot, got hurt last week. You have a good defensive play coming across right before that ball is caught, and that's the kind of thing you have to have by your defense, and that was Rusty Pendleton for Virginia Tech to keep that from being a completion. Outstanding play by Pendleton. It's second down and 24. Now the Pirates... Out of the shotgun with five receivers. First time we've seen it. Three left, two right. Anderson steps up, throws, and it is incomplete to Sophie at the 28-yard line. Pendleton defended on the play. Well, with a good defensive rush, you know that with no back in the backfield, you're going to have to run a rather quick pattern. And on that play, it just didn't appear that Anderson was able to get set because of the pressure. And he steps up. He throws the ball poorly in the ground. The receiver was open, but he just delivered it not well at all. Third down, 24 possession play for the Pirates. Still 2.03 to go in the first half. And Anderson's back. Looking left, stepping up. Pump fake in trouble. He spun down. Big play by the Virginia Tech defense. Big play by number 93. We thought Jerome Preston was there. Making the play, Preston is 
Virginia. A guy who's coming off reconstructive knee surgery. Yeah, Buren was open. Yes, he was, but Preston was there a little bit sooner. Big Jerome Preston, he's a good one. They were worried about him in the spring coming back from knee surgery, but he's come back and played extremely well. Fourth and 35. And the Pirates went the wrong way on that drive. Give Virginia Tech's defense a lot of credit. Yeah, that's fourth and a few. Here's Jacobs. Steve Sanders is back deep for the Hokies. Jacobs not a very good punt. Line of scrimmage the 48-yard line, and it takes a bad roll for the Pirates to the 35, a 17-yard punt. And the Hokies have plenty of time here, Willie, with 138 to go, and they still have three timeouts left. Yeah, they really do, and East Carolina didn't capitalize well at all on that fumble. You would have thought at the position on the field, as well as Anderson had moved the team once he started really playing in the second quarter, they would have done a lot more with it. But that holding penalty literally took something away from them and they didn't do much with that possession at all. Wide right, here comes Stevie Sanders. Freeman is in the slot right there, both dangerous. The Shays all on first and 10 at the 34 yard line. Draw, here's Point Dexter and Tony Davis jumps on his back and brings him down at about the 38 yard line. Gain of four, second down and six. Tony Davis is still in the shoes of that gentleman last year who Mark formerly Boyle. played in that 4-3 spot where he's kind of lined up very well. For those of you out there who've done don't know who that is, Robert Jones, who's now the starting middle linebacker for the Dallas Cowboys. Rolling right, pump fake, DeShazo looking, throwing, incomplete. At the 46-yard line, tried to hit Sanders, Lewis, and Walker defended on the play. DeShazo is rolling out again under pressure by Davis off his fingertips but still in completion. Third down and seven. So Steve Sanders, who almost made that play for Virginia Tech. We were moving along at a pretty good clip of this one until about the last uh, three minutes on the clock, and a lot of incompleted passes. Third down and seven. Pirates showing blitz. DeShazo throwing back left, trying to set up the screen, and it's dropped at the 30-yard line. Dropped at the 30-yard line, incomplete. Eric Myers defended on the play. John Rivers. Couldn't hang on. Under a lot of pressure. Almost caught it, didn't quite secure it. But the East Carolina defenders were in great position to have made the play anyway. Fourth down and seven. Rivers dropped that when he plays on the Tech basketball team as well. Here's the kick away by Colley. And Here's Letcher on the run to the 30-yard line, got away. 35, 40, Letcher's got a block. Letcher's in the open to the 50, down to the 40-yard line of Virginia Tech. That little guy scored it right through there. Dwayne Knight made the tackle for Virginia Tech, and Willie, you know about Morris Letcher. He's from Kansas City. Yes, I had a chance to meet him when I was down in the spring. Junior college transfer, tremendous speed, a lot of confidence. Very nice young man, but he almost had a chance to get away, but Dwayne Knight was able to make that play for Virginia Tech. But it still gives him great field position with about 53 seconds left in this half. Letcher is playing the spot that Deion Johnson played last year for East Carolina. Deion was a 10th round pick of the Houston Oilers. Here is Anderson throwing back right. Crumpler's got the ball. And big Carl Esther Crumpler down to the 28 yard line of Virginia Tech, Stacy Henley. And Anderson was under tremendous pressure on this play. You're going to see a Tech defender block great on that play. He keeps his position, is hit, throws the ball, and is caught. And you couldn't have anything else go well for you on the play than all of those things on that last one. Crumpler with a nice catch that time. He had some problem dropping some balls last week, even though he caught six. And the Pirates are on the move and only 40 seconds to go. Seven to three, first half. Pirates lead, trying to score before halftime. Anderson throws under pressure, and it's incomplete. P.J. Preston defended on the play. Yeah, that fellow, Jerome Preston, 6'5", 285 pounds, senior playing extremely well, has had a lot of hurry straight, put a lot of pressure on the quarterback, and it appeared that he hit him right as he was getting ready to deliver that last pass. And he's playing, as we mentioned early on, with an injury to his hand, playing extremely well today. His cousin, also 
Plays right alongside of him. Jerome Preston and his cousin is P.J. Preston. They're both out of Martinsville, Virginia. Second and 10, ball at the 28. Pirates trying to score before halftime with a 7-3 lead. And here is Anderson rolling left. Pump fake looks. He's going to throw. It's caught. Zolfi's wide open at the 15 inside the 10 to the 9-yard line. Alexander and Brown made the tackle. Zolfi ran a nice pattern, a crossing pattern between the defenders and gave Anderson a very good view of where to throw the ball, made a great catch and picked up good, good yardage. Anderson is rolling to his left, sets up well. Zofi's between the defenders, catches the ball in his hands, eyes it in well, and takes them down to the 10-yard line with about 26 seconds left in the first half. Peter Zofi had six catches last year. He's a Virginian playing here at ECU from Burke, Virginia. Up around Washington. Sure is. Virginia Tech gets an awful lot of players from up around that Washington, D.C. area. These two schools certainly compete recruiting-wise in both states, in Virginia and North Carolina. It's become a great rivalry, and it's scheduled to go for many, many years into the future. Great conditions today, even though we had the wind of about 8 to 10 miles per hour blowing out of the north northeast. This has been the coolest day in Greenville in many, many weeks. Ball is in the air here today. It's extremely hot in eastern North Carolina in the summertime. The Pirates always feel they have an advantage playing in this heat down here because they train in it all the time. Hand off Van Buren. That hole closed quickly at the eight-yard line, and quickly the Pirates also take a timeout, stops the clock with 22 seconds to go. Pendleton, another good play for Virginia Tech. Well, Virginia Tech obviously really has to try to tighten things up here. They've been on the field a lot. They've been under tremendous pressure from East Carolina in this second quarter, especially since Anderson's coming to the game. So they especially don't want to give up a touchdown. You have to give up three, you accept that, but you don't want to go in with another touchdown against you, 14 to three at the half. Big crowd on hand in Pickland Stadium. As we mentioned, the Third largest crowd in the history of ECU Pirate football, 35,121 here. Largest crowd was last week, 36,500. It always feels good to have football being played right when the weather gets crisp, right before the fall. Frank Beamer on the sideline. Frank brought his Murray State racer team in here when he was at Murray State. He's two and four against East Carolina in his career. Receivers out wide right, one back set. Anderson looking in the end zone, and he one-hops it to the receiver who traps it in the end zone. Morris Letcher was the intended receiver. Alexander and Henley defended on the play. It, it appeared that Anderson didn't complete his delivery well. There was a defender from Virginia Tech who got into his motion, so he had to stop his throw almost before he completed it, and obviously that led to the fact that the ball won bounce to the receiver, Morris Lechter. Willie, this is really big for the Hokies. They don't want to go in here 14 to three behind. 17 seconds to go, three receivers right again. Pirates put tremendous pressure on secondaries. Anderson looking left, still looking left, throws it, and we have a collision in the end zone. Crumpler was sandwiched by a couple of Tech defenders. And the Ficklin Stadium Pirate faithful here wanted to see a flag, but they don't get it. Yeah, they, want, they would like to have a flag, but it was not the receiver you want to go to. You want to go to the receiver who has a little bit more room to catch the ball, but you'll see here that with two defenders covering him, and it appeared that he might have been pushed because he was falling even before the ball got there. Knight and Henley defended on the play. Michael Anderson, 7 of 14 off the bench. Here's Deke Owens. He's never kicked a field goal in his career. He's trying to get his first one here. The spotted at the 16. It is up from 26, and he finally gets one. Deke Owens with the field goal, 10 to three Pirates lead. And Brian Bailey, that has to be a confidence booster for Deke Owens, as you know. Anthony Brenner, the kicker last year, had some academic problems. Deke's been thrown into the fire. He's got to feel good after getting that first one. 
Yeah, Deke Owens right there getting the field goal. And you know, Deke uh, had some pressure on him in the first game. And it was one of those uh, deals where he was really uptight, really nervous about it. But he's, he's from Jacksonville High School in Eastern North Carolina. And he looked very confident on that kick. And he puts three on the board for ECU. 10-3 Pirates. Virginia Tech dominated much of the first period. But Willie, here in the second quarter, it's been all Pirates. It has, it has been all East Carolina. <laughs> And no doubt going in at the half, the defensive coaches are going to be talking to that defense about what things they can do to try to slow down this offense being run by Michael Anderson. But they've just shown outstanding play selection. And if not for those two fumbles that they had on two successive possessions, that score could even be higher. Had a little delayed reaction on the cannon shot in the end zone. <laughs> the field goal was about two minutes ago, and the cannon shot finally goes off. But it all counts, and the Pirates have a 10-3 lead. Remember when you used to play out in San Diego against the Chargers, and they would have that cannon that would go off once they scored, and it could get you startled occasionally. <laughs> An onside kick by Owens. He's kind of squibs it to the 40-yard line. It's picked up by one of the hokey up men at the 40-yard line with six seconds to go, and the Pirates cover up on him. It was man, Kevin, Kevin Martin who picked it up. Returns, Pirates get a field goal on this last scoring drive. Dee Owens. Hits it from 26 yards out. His first field goal in his career. Six plays, 52 yards. It took him 50 seconds to put three on the board. I would wonder why East Carolina would decide to have basically a squib kick because where the ball is located gives Maurice DeShazo a chance to do something called a Hail Mary. Just drop back through it as far as you can and see what happens. Good point. Receivers out wide left, and DeShazo's looking that way. He's got all day. He's going to fire it. There's the Hail Mary. It's up for grabs at the 10-yard line. Knocked away. It's loose and picked off by the Pirates. And it's Grandison at the 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. Grandison runs out of bounds, and that's the end of the first half. Last year, Grandison did the same thing against Virginia Tech. He had a pass interception, but he took it back 95 yards for a TD. That really turned the game around, and he picks one off here. What an exciting first half. East Carolina 10, Virginia Tech 3 at halftime, and now here's Brian Bailey with Steve Logan. Coach Logan on the sideline, 10-3 at the half, and you got to be really pleased you've been able to run the football like you wanted to, and you've been able to move it just about at will. We've got a balanced offense going right now, which is what we intend to do all season long. Offensive line's doing a good job. We're having trouble down here in the red zone. We're having some busts by some young players, which is nothing but experience. We get that out of our system, we're going to be able to put some points on the board. What's the one thing you're going to say at halftime? We just got to keep the heat on. Okay, Coach Logan. On the sideline, East Carolina leads Virginia Tech 10-3 is our halftime score from Pickland Stadium. We'll be back and take a look back at last week, East Carolina and Syracuse, and much more as halftime continues right after this. At Pickland Stadium, 10-3, Pirates lead the Hokies as East Carolina comes back onto the field, willing to that air raid siren. And we were talking on the way out to the stadium today, and, and you remarked by saying, you know, this is really a fun place. This is kind of a party place. People here really enjoy their football, don't they? Yeah, it really is. And as I said, I was down here early this year at the Pigskin Pirate Pickoff Weekend. I got that out right again. But it's just such enthusiasm, such excitement, and just a lot of joy that the fans have coming out having the chance to support this great pirate operation down here in Greenville, North Carolina. Well, not only do they party here in the fall, but uh, they also get pretty pumped up for basketball season, and Eddie Payne's doing a great job with the Pirate basketball program, led by Lester Lyons, who was second team All-Colonial last year. And for ticket information to East Carolina basketball, call 1-800-DIAL-ECU. UNC Charlotte will be in here in December. Jeff Mullins Ball Club with Jarvis Lang, who was uh, a legend really in high school basketball, and these parts will be returning to Greenville with his UNC Charlotte team, and East Carolina competes in the Colonial Athletic Association. 10-3, Pirates with the lead. East Carolina comes back out onto the field. Virginia Tech also coming out on the other side of the field. We're going to go to the first half stats. Willie, we talked about the rushing game, and Again, East Carolina's done a nice job. Virginia Tech with only 70 yards on the ground. They really have because I think that was the big worry coming in for East Carolina, being able to try to stop that strong rushing attack of Tech. They've kept them under control, and in that 70 yards were a couple of long runs, so they've really done a very, very good job against Virginia Tech. Pirates have passed for 172 yards in this first half. Turnovers, as you can see, three on Virginia Tech, two on East Carolina. Pirates have had the ball for just a little bit more here in the first half of play. Well, as Steve Logan said at halftime, a message to the Pirates is just keep the heat on, and the Hokies are going to have to find a way, I think, uh, Willie, in the second half to 
get their ground game, which again has been so effective in this series, a little bit uh, fine-tuned here because usually Kennedy and Hebron have big days and they've been limited in this first half. They need to get their ground game going here. They do. One thing that's happened, if you think about going back to the second quarter, once Anderson came into the game, he's had some pretty long drives as far as ball control in that second quarter, so they haven't had as many opportunities when they've stalled to get the ball back. So it's going to have to be a situation where their defense is going to have to really control, stop East Carolina, and give the offense more opportunities to try to do something positive in the second half. Before we kick it off in the second half, Brian Bailey has some thoughts. Brian? Jeff, the Pirate coaches all week long said they wanted to get some kind of running game going, in particular to end up with second and five, second and four, second and three. In the Syracuse game, it seemed like it was always second and eight, second and nine, and it really changes around the game plan. So thus far in the first half, they've had those good plays on first down, and that's been a key to their success in that 10-3 lead. Last year in Blacksburg, it was 14-7 at halftime in favor of Virginia Tech. The Hokies were moving the ball down the field in the third quarter, ready to score. They were at the four-yard line of East Carolina, ready to punch it in and take a 21-7 lead when Greg Grandison picked off that pass and went 95 yards the other way to tie the score at 14, and then East Carolina went on for the 24-17 lead. But some terrific players on both of these schools last year, no longer, of course, in the program, we talk about Will Fuhr, who was the terrific quarterback at Virginia Tech, made the Chicago Bears, and Jeff Blake, the Pirate quarterback, made the New York Jets. So both quarterbacks in this game last year are now in the NFL. Deke Owens kicks it off. We're underway in the second half. Hodges, one of the up men, picks it up at the 20 to the 25, and he's hit and knocked down from behind at the 25, and a good hit made by Greg Floyd for the Pirates. It'll bring up first and 10 now for Virginia Tech at the 25-yard line. Maurice DeShazo. That is, ends up being good field position to start this second half at the 25-yard line. A rather short kickoff by East Carolina. DeShazo comes out to the line of scrimmage. He was 6 of 14 in the first half. He had one intercepted through for 85 yards, was sacked once. High formation receivers left and right just underway in the second half as the Shazo turns, hands to Hebron. He's got blockers in front, and there he goes into the secondary. Grandison's hanging on and finally brings him down at the 45-yard line. A 20-yard pickup. Greg Grandison makes the tackle, and Willie, that's what Frank Beamer wants to see. It really is, and he really got most of that on his own. He was able to come to his left and jumped outside of the defense. The offensive end, and as you'll notice, he cuts inside, cuts back outside, and just shows a lot of great running ability, and then Carrick Grandison about another three or four yards before he's finally down. First and ten, Virginia Tech on the move as we begin the second half of play. DeShazo looks, throws, and it is incomplete to Antonio Freeman, and he had him open. He really did. That was a nice play where you're trying to show a dive into the line, pulls the ball back and attempts to deliver it to his split in but just didn't come up with the completion. Second down and 10 coming up for Virginia Tech. 65% of Virginia Tech's offense in this series has been on the ground. They've averaged 258 yards per game rushing. And as you can see in that first half, Tech only rushed for 70 yards. Second down and 10, receivers wide right in the eye again. Shazo to Hebron. Hebron is hit and dropped after a yard gain. Outstanding play. There's your man again, Willie Tony Davis. Yes, it is. Tony Davis came over with great position because it appeared that Hebron had a chance to get upfield. He thought he saw something there. So you see the Shazo handed off to Hebron here. He gets to the line of scrimmage, makes his cut, and it disappears because there's Davis able to make another tackle. It will be interesting to see how many tackles he really has when this game is almost over. Got him right around the neck. It's third and nine, and here's DeShazo looking to set up the screen, looking left. Bernard Carter's after it. Comes back right, still on the run, pumps, and he's going to be run out of bounds at the 50-yard line. He's five yards short of the first down. Maurice ran right into a bunch of Pirates here on the sideline and comes out of that unscathed. Thomas Jones ran him out of bounds. It's a nice play on Jones' part, but if you could have seen on the other side of the field what had happened, Davis took away the opportunity for the screen. Tony Davis is out in the position against the guard, so there was nowhere for him to throw. He has to roll back out all the way to his right, continuing under pressure. Out of bounds before he can get a first down, creating a fourth down situation. Here's Collie to punt. He had two punts in the first half, a 40.5 yard average. Letcher's back deep. Morris is going to let it bounce behind him. It bounces at the five and just goes into the end zone. 
That was close. It really was. The ball looked like it really started to slow down once it hit the ground. Pirates get a break. They'll have it at the 20 yard line. 13.45 to go. Third quarter, East Carolina 10. Virginia Tech 3. We're coming back. John McConnell back in at quarterback to begin the second half for ECU. Shot in the first half was 5 of 7. Two receivers left, one right. Hand off. Van Buren, like a pinball, gets hit at the 20 yard line and spins forward to the 21. Gain of only about one yard. Straight ahead play. What, what appeared to happen is the defensive line did a much better job in terms of the total line scrimmage. Robert Jones, number one draft pick. First rookie linebacker to ever start for the Dallas Cowboys. Willie, he plays your old position, and I know how impressed you are with him. I really am, and, he, and as you say, that he's the first rookie since Leroy Jordan to be a starter in Dallas. Just impressive. And Jeff Blake made the New York Jets back to pass. Here's McConnell looking, has time, and he threw it into a big crowd. It's incomplete at the 20-yard line. Van Buren was the intended receiver. Third down and nine, Jerome Preston. Well, he's been in the middle of everything for Virginia Tech. He's playing a fine game up front for the Hokies. Defending for the Hokies. Can you imagine how well he'd be playing if he was completely healthy? That's exactly right. <laughs> he's not playing 100 percent. Larry said another player off that team last year, Luke Fisher, who's with the Minnesota Vikings. Off last year's team, back to pass. Here's McConnell, third and nine, looking right, caught by Van Buren, and he is hit and dropped right in his tracks by P.J. Preston. Fourth and nine, and the Pirates will have to punt it away, and Willie, I have the feeling we'll see Mr. Anderson in there pretty quick here in the second half. Yeah, and I guess you would wonder, with the success that Anderson was having in the second quarter, the coach's decision to bring McConnell back, but uh, as you said, I think we will see Anderson back in not too distant point in time. There's Michael Jacobs, the redshirt freshman for the Pirates, kicking this one away. Jacobs had three punts in the first half. He boomed that one back to the 35-yard line. Here's Sanders. He's got a block. 40-45 to the 50. A good return by Sanders to the 50-yard line. Very nice return that time. And Sanders takes it right to midfield. Reggie Robinson made a second tackle on special teams today for the East Carolina Pirates. Well, the Hokies are missing Bo Campbell, the leading punt returner in the nation last year with an 18.2 yard average. Bo dislocated his elbow, and that uh, has been a blow to their deep threat game and also to their punt returning. Frank Beamer on the sideline in his sixth year at Virginia Tech trying to get his Hokies back on the scoreboard here. The Shazon handoff runs into an absolute stone wall of Pirates right at the line of scrimmage. Dylan and Davis not Coin Dexter down in his tracks. And the defensive coaches have to be pleased with the way the Hokie. They have to be because the Pirate defense is playing. To watch this defense come together, you have Davis attacking on that play and Dylan also. So you just have a great use of a 4-3. Second down and nine. Hebron going wide. They close on him and they undercut him at about the 46 yard line. He stumbles forward across the 45. Hebron the carry, Lewis and Beasley making the tackle. Talked about Jerry Dillon in on that last stop. Jerry is a second team all South independent. He was born in uh, Trinidad, grew up in Lake Placid, Florida. And with a big year, and of course he has that injury, but with a big year, he could be an All-American. He is an outstanding athlete playing at that outside linebacker spot. Third down and four, possession play, Hokies at the Pirate 45-yard line. Sanders is in motion. To Cezo with a long count, turns, handoff right side. Hebron's got the first down into the Pirate secondary to the 35-yard line. He put his head down and made a fine run. Vaughn Hebron out of Baltimore. Dillon and Morris Foreman made the tackle. He really did. And that was probably one of the most well-executed running plays inside they've had all day. You see the guard, 51, getting one of the blocks. And you see great body control, good cuts, and was able to really keep this drive alive with that run. Tenth time, uh, tenth all-time rusher on the Virginia Tech all-time rushing list. 1,846 yards coming into the ball game today. He is a good one. First and 10 at the 34. Hokies on the move. Trailing 10-3, to 10-40 to go third quarter. DeShazo on the option keeps, and he's into the secondary and pulled down at the 18-yard line by Morris Foreman. 
Hokies are executing their ground game very well now. They really are, and you can see the execution is Shazo fakes it into the line, has great speed as he cuts up field, and gives his team a first down. And this is one of the more impressive drives they've had in a good while in stringing it along a multiple play drive. Maurice runs about a 4 5 40. You can see it there. He got up there very quickly through that hole. First and 10. Hookies on the move at the 23, and we've got flags there. It's pretty much of a penalty-free first half in this first half. As last week, the Pirates, as we mentioned, had a lot of problems with penalties, but they did a much better job of it in the uh, first half of this game. They were whistled for two penalties, and Virginia Tech only one, so it's been an error-free game for the most part. This time against Virginia Tech, illegal procedure, costs them five, spots it at the 27-yard line. First and 15 for the Hokies. Virginia Tech, a member of the Big East. They were an independent for many years. We're in the Southern Conference. East Carolina also in the Southern Conference a number of years ago. Here's DeShazo running right, throwing. Man, wide open. It is caught and then juggled out of bounds. Did they say he caught it? They did. At the 14-yard line, Antonio Freeman made the catch. Maurice DeShazo's pass is complete. Let's take a close look at this one. Freeman was juggling as he was headed out of bounds here. DeShazo on the run. DeShazo rolls out, and you can see Freeman catch it. Looked as if though he was changing hands a little bit more than that juggling, so I think he would have argued that point. Good reception by Freeman, second and two at the 14-yard line. And in motion, DeShazo pitches. Hebron lost the ball. Pirates have the football on the turnover at the 21-yard line. Zion Kumalai comes up with the ball for East Carolina. And the Hokies turn it over to the Pirates at the 21-yard line. Zion Kumalai. Johnny on the spot, big play for the Pirate defense. Very big play on the toss, the ball's a little bit behind. Zion Kumala comes over, makes a great fumble recovery for East Carolina, taking away that very good opportunity that Virginia Tech had starting the second half. There he is, Zion Kumala. Out of Grand Rapids Community College. First down and 10, Pirates come back out to the 21, and McConnell is back out there again as the quarterback. Second series for the Pirates. He fakes the handoff, looking right, drawn over the middle, and it's tucked away. A dangerous pass. Carlester Crumpler was the intended receiver. There were three Hokies all around him, led right. by Stacy Henley. You're right about that. There, he was not throwing to a wide open receiver at all. And I think one of the problems that occurs also is that the tight end, once he sets up and his quarterback rolls out, sometimes you have to to move to give him a little bit better target to get away from the defenders. McConnell now five of nine. Pirates 10, Hokies three, 9.51 to go third quarter. One back set this time for East Carolina. And McConnell's under heavy pressure and he got away. Rolling left, thrown back right, and it is caught by Dia Hicks. How in the world did he catch that ball? We've also got a flag down. Dia Hicks made an unbelievable catch of that ball. He really did. It'll be great to see that one again because it was just an outstanding play. Let's watch Dia Hicks, the junior college transfer from Northeast Mississippi JC. Got to the tail end of that one, and McConnell really got popped good. You know, Willie McConnell showed good mobility getting away. He's another guy coming off knee surgery. In fact, last year after Pass he entered his knee before the offense holding they offset replay the down offsetting penalties as you heard they'll replay the down he was injured in practice before the South Carolina game last year a terrible knee injury they didn't think he would ever play again he's really battled back well it has affected his mobility as much as it might have second down and ten ball at the 21 and McConnell's back he's looking right he's drawing man's yeah. wide open caught at the 35 yard line to the 40 yard line is the receiver first down for the Pirates and Kirk Alexander made the stop on Dia Hicks a junior college transfer Dia Hicks making the catch for the Pirates we get another look where it is first down. Hicks 
uh, in Pensacola originally, good size, 6'3", 185. First down, Pirates into the middle of the line. Boy, what a monumental collision that was at the 40-yard line. Cedric Van Buren got run over by Bird and Basham. He really did. Bird and Basham, that sounded as if though what it actually was because it appeared to be five or six Virginia Tech defenders in there on that play, and that's the kind of game tackle you want to control the defensive line if you want to try to slow down what is now appearing to be East Carolina getting into a little bit better flow of offense with McConnell back in there. Second down and 10, no gain. One back set again. This time, Batson's in motion to the right. McConnell looks, throws to him, and overthrows him. Third and 10 coming up. Well, Batson is a guy that, coming into the season, I don't know how much the Pirate coaching staff thought he would play. He was going to be a backup, but boy, he finds himself now right in the spotlight with Ronnie Williams, the normal starting H-back out with an injury. Ronnie's out for the entire year. He'll be red-shirted, and we'll bring him back next year. Batson's getting a lot of playing time. He looks like he's going to be a good one. Third and 10. Pirates again to the line of scrimmage. Third down and 10. The ball is at the 40-yard line. Possession play for ECU. Junior Smith's in motion. McConnell's back in the pocket. Here they come. He dumps it off, and it is incomplete. Almost caught by Smith and then almost intercepted by Melendez Bird. It's fourth and 10. And Jacobs will come back for the Pirates and put it away. A ball that he should have caught even though the ball was a little bit behind. He got his hands on it. And as you said, it was almost intercepted, but ended up an incompletion for East Carolina. Jacobs is back to punt. Steve Sanders back to return for Virginia Tech, and they almost blocked it. He just barely got that one away. Sanders at the 20 is popped. And a couple of more Pirates jump on after the initial tackler had him by the ankle. That was Derek Batson. 8.27 to go, third quarter from Ficklin Stadium. Greenville, North Carolina, East Carolina 10, and Virginia Tech 3. We're coming back. East Carolina 10, Virginia Tech 3, 8.27 to go, third quarter. We've got a strange-looking Brian Bailey on the sideline. Usually Brian Bailey strange anyway, but this, this is the official hat of East Carolina Pirate coach Steve Logan. Now he wore it last year as the offensive coordinator and he's got his autograph on the back and it sells for $14.95. wonder if Willie Lanier would wear this kind of hat. <laughs> I think Willie looked good in that hat. <laughs> First down and 10. There's the handoff and it's Kennedy off the left side across the 40 to about the 41 yard line. Dylan and Grandison. Made the tackle after a gain of about 12 yards as Kennedy finally makes his presence known. Tony Kennedy out of Bladensburg, Maryland, 5'11", 212, and a senior. He had 70 yards last week against JMU. First down and 10 now coming up for Virginia Tech. They just announced the Western Carolina Georgia Tech score here at Ficklin Stadium. Western Carolina leading 6 to nothing over Bill Lewis's Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets as Tony Kennedy Gets the toss, and again, he goes wide left to about the 46-yard line of ECU. As now Kennedy is toting the football, Willie, and they want to get him involved. Yeah, obviously he decided to get involved very quickly because on that last two plays, he's picked up about 22 yards. And you see the handoff to him here, cutting to his left. Just great speed outside of the defensive end. You have to have East Carolina getting upfield on that play to force them back inside to stop that kind of play. First down at 10, 46-yard line. This time it's Hebron going left on the sweep. He ran right into one of his own players, and one of his own players really decked him. Yeah, he took a much greater blow from <laughs> one of his friends than he did the defender. For the Hogies. Davis and Lewis defended on the play. They didn't need much help, though, as you'll see. Now you'll because see that. As he starts upfield, he cuts back inside, and sometimes your friends get you more than your enemies. He ran right into Hodges, 221-pound fullback. Second and five. Hokies to the line of scrimmage. The Pirate 41, East Carolina 10, Virginia Tech 3. Here's Hebron, cut and right, spins inside the 40 to about the 39. Going to bring up third down and about three yards to go for Tech. Davis and Kumalai. Make the tackle. Playing that 4-3, what has happened at times is that having a little bit smaller defensive line, I think the average lineman for East Carolina weighs only about 250. They've been stunning somewhat. They stunt to the inside, the play goes to the outside. It creates a much greater problem. So 
they're just going to have to probably play a little bit more at home to try to control this offense. Possession play, third down and three. Hokies with the ball at the Pirate 39-yard line. DeShazo fumbles the snap. He got it back. He's running to the left side, and he got away from the first, and then he pitches it late, and Hebron takes it down to about the 25-yard line. Well, the Hokies will take it. That play got messed up. Fred Walker ran him out of bounds on the far sideline. This is only DeShazo's athletic ability here, Willie. It is got tremendous. This to... Watch it. The ball falls on the ground. He picks it up. He cuts to his left, moves the ball around, flips it out. It looks like he threw it ahead, but it appears he was being hit as the ball went on the lateral. The officials didn't call it. So now Virginia Tech ends up with, at the 22-yard line with a first down. Credit that to the athletic ability of Maurice DeShazo. First down and 10 at the Pirate 23-yard line. Man in motion to the near side. Hand off. Kennedy jukes his way to about the 22. That hole closed quickly. Gain of one. We'll call it second and nine. Davis and Lewis. We are calling out Tony Davis's name on just about every play here. Yes, we really are. I know they're very happy on this first down to see now it's a second and nine instead of a first down or a third and one because Virginia Tech with Kennedy in the backfield and with DeShazo carrying the ball, they've really moved down the field very quickly on running plays so far in this third quarter. Second down and nine. Hokies at the Pirate, 22-yard line. Burke is in motion. Hand up, coming right. Here's Kennedy, he's got a block to the outside, to the 10, to the five-yard line. Kennedy got around the corner to the five-yard line, first and goal, Virginia Tech at the Pirate five-yard line. Virginia Tech did a great job of running this play because with the Shazo handing off to Kennedy, the defensive end for East Carolina must have gone inside. Kennedy is outside, taken out at the three, at the three or four-yard line. But you have to have your defensive ends getting upfield. You can see number 86 was trapped inside. Once he turns the corner, there's no one there. You're right, Jerry Dillon got trapped and he got outside. It's first and goal from the five. Hokies knocking on the door. Hodges. Bangs it up to the four, maybe to the three-yard line. Second and goal, Virginia Tech. Kumalai made the tackle for ECU. 5.58 to go, third quarter. Clock moving, Pirates 10, Hokies 3, and Virginia Tech trying to tie it up here. They really are, and East Carolina is under tremendous pressure. The most pressure they've been under from a sustained drive by East Carolina, about rather from Virginia Tech, all afternoon. And we'll just have to see whether they can step it up a notch and try to control these next two plays. Big play here, second and goal from the four. DeShazo turns, hands, getting outside again. It's Kennedy, this time a great tackle made by Greg Floyd at the three-yard line. Oh, what a one-on-one -on -one tackle made by Greg Floyd. That was a great hit. It really was. Greg maintained very good position, didn't go for any of the fakes. As Kennedy comes around the end, he stays there, gets a good solid hit, takes his legs out, doesn't allow him to pick up any additional yardage on that play. Greg Floyd defended the run very well last week against Syracuse. He's out of Anderson, South Carolina. Third and goal from the two. Virginia Tech wants to try and bang it in on this play. Third and goal from the two-yard line. Burks in motion. The Shazo handoff. It's Kennedy. He squirts down to about the one-yard line. He was down on his knees when he was still trying to crawl in. But I think they're going to mark it down at about the one. You can see the handoff from DeShazo to Kennedy. He cuts up field. He's hit initially and goes down at about the one. You can see that his struggle into the end zone, but his knees had already hit down, and that's why the ball is spotted where it is. Thomas Jones made the tackle for East Carolina, and it's fourth and goal at the Pirate one-yard line. Frank Beamer's going to go for it here for Virginia Tech. Fourth and goal at the one, full house backfield. Here's DeShazo, fakes it into the line, and he walks into the end zone. Great play call by the Hokies. Fake into the line, and DeShazo just walks into the end zone. It's a 10-9 ball game, and the Hokies have a chance to tie it up with 4.08 to go in the third quarter. Couldn't have been drawn up any better. When your players execute the way you have it written, that's the great thing you like about it. You see the fake, you see the defenders go for the fake. He turns the corner, no one's there, could have walked in as he did. Looked like the right tackle may have jumped for Virginia Tech. As DeShazo takes it in for the touchdown, and the Hokies are right back in it here with 4.08 to go in the third quarter. Extra point now coming up for Ryan Williams. It's up, and it's good. 
408 to go in the third quarter, and the Hokies have stormed back to put a touchdown on the board, and we're all tied. East Carolina 10 and Virginia Tech 10. Going to take another look. Willie, get your comments here on this last play. Well, the fake is so good that the running back dived into the line, and one of the defenders thinks he has to try to get in there for the play, and that allows the shaders over to come around untouched for a outstanding drive for Virginia Tech. Again, it looked like back and tied the this right, game. right tackle may have jumped just a bit on that last play as we saw on the replay there. Well, I think one thing that happens is that maybe, maybe he did slightly, but if that was right before the play was missed and the points go up on the board, we're here tied 10-10. 408 to go, third quarter, and I have a feeling we're going to see Michael Anderson back in there. <laughs> I think you might be right. <laughs> Well, these games, no surprise, it's tied with 4.08 to go in the third quarter. They almost all go into the fourth quarter and sometimes even down to the last play of the game before they're finally decided. Virginia Tech has big rivals in the University of Virginia and West Virginia. East Carolina, of course, for many years, played North Carolina State every year. And then that series was discontinued and it was... Really sweet revenge for the Pirates last year to beat North Carolina State in the Peach Bowl, their longtime rival. This Virginia Tech game now for East Carolina has really become a big game for them every year. Reeves will kick Foreman and Van Buren are deep, and he just pops that thing almost straight up in the air. One of the up men for the Pirates takes it at the 32-yard line. It was number 22 for East Carolina coming up with the ball. Fred Walker, the... Strong safety as the kick was very short by Reeves, and it's first and ten. Pirates and Anderson trots back out onto the field. The East Carolina fans give him a big cheer. Making the stop for the Hokies. Ball is spotted at the ECU 34-yard line. First down, Pirates. 11 plays, 71 yards, 421. DeShazo takes it in for the touchdown from a yard out. Receivers left and right. One back set. Anderson to Junior Smith. He's got a big hole to the 40, to the 45, to the 46-yard line. Junior Smith rips off 11 yards. Junior Smith. They think this little guy can be something special. Just He's a, only a sophomore. Yeah, just a basic play. Anderson moves back, hands it to him. Great hole, just runs straight up the field. And with the kind of blocking like that, uh, you or I might still be able to pick up a couple of yards. I don't know about that. Maybe you, <laughs> but I don't know about me. First down and 10, ball at the 46-yard line. Receivers left and right. Junior Smith says his hero is Barry Sanders. Back to pass. Anderson throwing left. It's knocked down. Getting a big paw up was Bernard Basham. Bernard is 6'5", and he went up high and knocked that one down. It gets a big cheer out of the Hokie fans. Virginia Tech bot brought about 1,200 fans to Greenville today. By defensive end, Bernard Basham. Basham going up high and knocking that one down. John Rivers also plays at that spot sometimes. John's about 6'5", 6'6". Tough to throw over those guys. Second down and 10. Ball at the 46 and Anderson's back. Looking left. Drawn, it's tipped, it's up for grabs. Loose and off the hands of Junior Smith. Incomplete, third down and 10 coming up. Well, even though he didn't catch it, at least it kept Virginia Tech from having an interception, but you have two plays in a row where one is knocked down and the next one is hit again by number 99 for Virginia Tech, hit again by 43, and then Junior Smith almost gets it, but it falls to the ground. Don Davis knocked the first one down. Third down and 10. Pirates with the ball at the 46-yard line. Receivers right, Anderson's back. Looking back right, and it's picked off! Intercepted by Virginia Tech. There's a flag down, so hold everything as Virginia Tech's Tyrone Drakeford picks it off at the 46-yard line and takes it in for a Virginia Tech score with 3.24 to go. And let's see what the flag's all about. Hold on. They're coming back upfield. Drakeford with that blinding 4-2 speed. Here's the play. They're going to decline the penalty. The touchdown's going to stand here ball was thrown out in the flat and it was delivered slowly and I said slowly it was not delivered quickly allowed him to step into position made a great play good break on the ball 
gives Virginia Tech its second touchdown of this third quarter. Tyrone Drakeford with the big interception for Virginia Tech. He's an outstanding player out of Camden, South Carolina. 5'10", 185-pound junior. Makes a big play in the Hokie secondary, and Virginia Tech has a 16-10 lead. Here's Williams for the extra point. It is up and good. Hokie 17. Pirates 10, 324 to go in the third quarter. And Brian Bailey, the Hokies have put two touchdowns on the board. They've turned the momentum around here. And they have turned things around very quickly. You know, one of the problems with inexperience at the quarterback position is that the quarterback will make key mistakes like that, sometimes telegraphing their passes. That's exactly what it looked like on that play. And Virginia Tech turned it into six very quickly. Tyrone Drakeford with the interception and the touchdown. As we talk about Drakeford, he just made his ninth interception of his career, and that ties his head coach, Frank Beamer. Frank played in the secondary for Virginia Tech back in the 60s, and he ties him with nine interceptions on the all-time career interception list at Virginia Tech. He was the second-team All-Big East performer last year out of Camden, South Carolina and Fork Union Military Academy. Big play by Drakeford. And it's 17 to 10 Hokies with 3.24 to go in the third quarter. It was an outstanding play. One thing East Carolina likes to do is to run a trips right where they have three receivers to the same side of the field. They run one short, one deep, and they'll hold one as an outlet or flare receiver. And Drakeford made a tremendous cut on the ball when it was being delivered by Anderson and plucked it out to give them that score. So the Hokies down 10-3 to start the third quarter. Now lead 17 to 10, and there's the kick. It's Morris Foreman a yard deep. He's coming out. Foreman on the reverse, and they've got a wall set up to this side. It's Junior Smith across the 20 to the 23. The Hokies did a nice job that time of defending it. It looked like that could have gone for more yards when the handoff was made. It could have gone for a lot more had Smith decided to cut out instead of in because he had nothing but grass and no one to the outside. It You're was exactly set up extremely right, well. Willie, and maybe we can get a good look at it here. Off to Junior Smith. Foreman to Smith, and boy, look at the flow going the other way. At this point, there's no one outside except 22, and there's a receiver in position to help him out with the block. Pirates down, have to come back. First and 10 at the 23, Anderson throws. It's caught by Van Buren. He breaks the tackle, and Cedric then is hit and dropped to the 29-yard line, a gain of six. Michael Anderson Chad King defended on the play. Pirates will pull some rabbits out of the hat, won't they? You don't really know what to expect from them. Well, East Carolina has to really come back and get in this game to get their confidence going again because with Virginia Tech having scored two touchdowns here in the third quarter, they have to come out and establish something, have a long drive, try to get some points on the board to slow down this movement of Virginia Tech. Second and fourth at 29. Dia Hicks open, couldn't hang on, drops the ball at the 40-yard line. It brings up third down and four. Pendleton defended on the play for Virginia Tech. That was, that was a well-thrown ball by Anderson on that play, and it appeared that it was going to be a great catch, just bobbled it as he was falling, wasn't able to quite control it. Dia Hicks was the most valuable player in the Mississippi Junior College All-Star game last year. In his first season as a Pirate, the junior from Pensacola, Florida. Third down and four. Pirates to the line of scrimmage, the 29-yard line. And we have a delay here. It's going to be timeout for East Carolina as Michael Anderson wants to go to the sideline and talk to his first-year head coach, Steve Logan. Let's go down to Brian Bailey. Brian? Ladies and gentlemen, you might get way. Those uh, situations as a mascot, you're really not injured. We haven't had any big injuries in this ballgame. Rod Gray was in the Pirate outfit earlier in this game. and. and we have a broken hand, maybe? Oh, no, it's just a little, little injury. These fans right here today have just been, been a little rough, but hey, that's all right. Pirates are uh, got to get back on the board here, so I'll be all right for next game. From the looks of things, it may have happened here in the third quarter because the Pirates are struggling, too. Thanks, Brian. 17-10, Pirates are struggling. Down by a touchdown out of Virginia Tech with 2.36 to go. And Tony Kennedy, who's been the old nemesis for East Carolina, down through the years, really got that Virginia Tech running game in order in the early part of this third period to get that first touchdown on the board and then the interception return for a TD by Tyrone Drakeford and the Hokies are on top. It's always interesting after 
halftime when a team hasn't done things quite as well to see how well they execute after they've gone in, settled down, really define those things they're going to try to do in that third quarter. And apparently Virginia Tech, have, they've done a great job of executing those changes they have to make at the half. Anderson, 9 of 21 now. Third down and four brings the Pirates out to the 29-yard line. Fakes, looks over the middle. It is caught at the 40-yard line. Clayton Driver's got the first down. Big catch by, made by Clayton Pendleton. Made the hit. Clayton told me before the season started he wanted to be that clutch guy, that clutch receiver to pick up first downs, and he made a big catch here. Well, he was what you'd call a go-to guy on that play because Anderson drops back sets up well and delivers very, very fine catch on the cut by Clayton Driver. A lot of confidence to go to him on that play, gives him the first down, and hopefully they can try to keep this drive alive. First down and 10 at the 39. Receivers left and right, one back set. Hokey showing blitz, quick out. Batson's got it. He's trying to turn the corner. He gets to the 46-yard line. Gain of about seven. Derek Batson again makes the catch. Basham and Henley. The tackle for the Virginia Tech Hokies. It's just a quick hitch to Batson, who takes one step back off the line of scrimmage. You try to get him the ball quickly and let him utilize his speed to get up field. He picks up about seven yards, giving him now second and three. Seven yards on first down, and it's second down and three. Junior Smith remains the lone setback. Two receivers right, one left. Morris Letcher is out left. And this time it's Cedric Van Buren across the 50-yard line. It was Van Buren, not Smith in the backfield, and Cedric takes it to the 46-yard line of Virginia Tech. Melendez Bird made the tackle for the Hokies. Cedric had a great Peach Bowl last year in Atlanta. As you see him carry it here. Cedric had 65 yards on just 11 carries in the Peach Bowl last year. He's a Dope Walker nominee. One of the top 34 running backs in the country for that Doak Walker Award. First and 10, Pirates on the move. Anderson throwing right. Wide opens Dia Hicks. He makes the catch at the 40-yard line. Gain of six. Brings up second down and four, Ken Brown, who led the Hokies last week with 11 tackles against James Madison. Made the hit yeah, for Frank Beaverstein. Brown came over and made a very nice hit on that. But as you said, with the, with the ball being delivered a little bit low, good pass by Anderson. But it's always hard to throw balls out in the flat like that, but he got it to him very quickly. Anderson, lanky quarterback for the Pirates, brings ECU right back to the line of scrimmage. Second down and four, trips right, rolling right. Pumps, looks, going deep. Man out there, up for grabs, it's knocked away in the end zone. No, it's caught, caught by Clayton Driver. What a catch by Clayton Driver in the end zone. Unbelievable catch by the senior from Atlanta. What great hands he has. Willie, we talked about it earlier. Oh, my, what a catch by Clayton Driver. It was a great catch. As you said, he wanted to be the guy, the go-to guy this year. He wants them to have confidence in him. The way they run that trip, they'll take one guy deep, one in the flat, and one in a crossing pattern. He was able to maintain great concentration because the ball is thrown almost to the back of the end zone. It's touched by a defender, he goes to the ground and rolls up his leg. Never touched the ground, touchdown, East Carolina. Unbelievable catch by Clayton Driver. Here's Owens for the extra point, and it's blocked. The extra point is blocked, and what a big extra point block that is by Bernard Basham. It's 17-16, Hokies with 25 seconds to go in the third quarter. Here's Anderson Aaron and out. Boys, he got a great arm. Another highlight film catch because that has to be a great look at that. Hits his body, never touches the ground, touchdown. Unbelievable catch by Clayton Driver. I wonder how you practice that. <laughs> I don't think you do. 17-16 <laughs> Hokies. And there's Clayton out of College Park, Georgia in the Atlanta area. Went back and played in his hometown of the Peach Bowl last year. And that was a big moment for Clayton and came up with a win. Of course, in the Peach Bowl game over North Carolina State. Pirates have a lot of players from that Atlanta area. But now the extra point blocked by Basham. And it could be deja vu a couple of years ago in this series. In Greenville, John Rivers blocked an extra point, And Virginia Tech went on for a 24-23 victory over the Pirates. That was the margin of difference. One extra point blocked. 
And it was a Virginia Tech victory. Owens gets ready to kick it off. And he's going to pop it up. Short kick. And a couple of Hokies run into each other. Hodges has it. He's trying to go wide left. And he's going to be hit and knocked down at the 25-yard line. Owens doesn't want to kick that ball deep to either Kennedy or Hebron. Victor McBride downfield made the hit out of Red Springs, North Carolina. And it's first and 10 Hokies at the 25-yard line. You know, Willie, we talked about this earlier. It takes Virginia Tech longer to score. East Carolina can come down the field and score in a hurry. Six plays, 78 yards, 301 for the Pirates. They scored in a hurry. That doesn't take long, does it? No. Nope. <laughs> that was a beautiful pass, a beautiful catch. Virginia Tech back to the line of scrimmage, but where it counts, East Carolina down to the Hokies. Get movement on the line, no flag. Here's the handoff, Hebron going wide right. He got around the corner, and he's out of bounds at the 35-yard line. Boy, the East Carolina coaches are upset. Again, they thought there was movement in that Virginia Tech line before the snap. Let's yeah, see if we can see it. appeared to be a lot of confusion because some of their players hesitated instead of just going ahead and making the play. And that's why a lot of fans were booing, but he was able to pick up almost a first down. But it was a lot of confusion on that play as to what actually was happening. In the second half, Willie, we are seeing Kennedy and Hebron. They're really beginning to make their presence known here. They really are. And Hebron's showing a lot of speed when he headed up that sideline. But I think one thing that you always want to coach your players to do is always play the play. Don't ever get involved with worrying about what the call might be. Make sure you play the play. Hebron does pick up the first down as the markers come to the near sideline. And it's a first down, Virginia Tech with 14 seconds to go in the third quarter, and the Hokies leading 17-16. It was 10-3 at halftime in favor of East Carolina. Shazel, the sophomore out of Stewart, Virginia, has gone all the way today for Virginia Tech at that quarterback spot. First and 10. He's going to check off here at the line of scrimmage. Gets the snap, handoff, Hebron going left. Trying to get to the outside. The Pirates have him surrounded. He's going down at the 31-yard line. Loss of four. Walker and Lewis were there. And you can see the way that time those East Carolina defenders can run. Willie, they got over to that side in a hurry. They really can. It was a great gang tackling. That's what you want from your defenders. And it wasn't just one play, but you had three or four there on that play. Pirates did a good job stringing that play out to the far sideline. That's the end of three. Hokie 17, Pirates 16. We're coming back to Ficklin right after this time. The Hokies lose three yards on their first and ten play as we see it again. Hebron going left, and Willie, they've got him surrounded here. Yes, they do, and they have great speed, lateral speed. Cut him off going to the sideline. You see two or three, four now there to make the kind of play, and that's what you really want from your defense, to cut down those potentially dangerous outside runs like that. Pirate defense has played so much better today than they did last week against Syracuse, but remember the Orangemen, a top 10 team this year. They've got an awful lot of offensive weapons. We start the fourth quarter. It should be a great one. 17-16 to Shazo. Fakes, he's rolling right. Carter's chasing him. Carter's still after him, and Carter runs him down. That's a 29-yard line. We also have a late flag down. Loss of three yards. We talk about the speed, Willie, of DeShazo, and Bernard Carter ran him down. Yes, he did, and you see that great speed. Even though DeShazo is trying to get a little bit of balance, Carter is still going after him, but it appears, unfortunately, he got a face mask as he went down, and that's what the penalty is about. And it appears that DeShazo might have been a little bit shaken up on that play also. Bernard Carter makes the outstanding play, but then grabs the face mask. Bernard makes big plays. He had two sacks last week in the Syracuse game out of Tallahassee, a junior. And unfortunately, first down. face mask on the defense, wide ball foul, back to the previous spot, five-yard penalty. One of those inadvertent face masks, unfortunately for the Pirates, five-yard penalty after that five play by Carter. We can see it clearly here. No question, Carter had him by the face mask with that left hand. So the Hokies, who are struggling a little bit offensively now, come to the line of scrimmage following the penalty. Second down and eight at their own 37. Backs are split, and Sanders is in motion to this side. The Shazo, handoff left side. Hebron gets away, breaks two tackles, and 
moves the ball close to the first down marker. Boy, a good run that time by Hebron. It certainly was. He made a nice cut because it appeared he was going to be tackled for, I think, less, at least four or five yards further than where he was, was stopped. But he made a good pivot cut back upfield to gain most of that yardage. Here he is again, Von Hebron out of Baltimore. He's getting with a good game next week. He'll be right knocking on the door of 2,000 yards rushing in his career. He, he may get that next week. He's got 90 yards today. That puts him all somewhere around the 1,950 mark on his career. He is knocking on the door at 2,000 yards rushing in his Virginia Tech career, and it's been a great one. Timeout with 13.53 to go. Hokies 17 and the Pirates 16. They always come down to the fourth quarter, folks, and that's what we have again here today. We're coming back to Greenville right after this. Zo brings him out of the eye. Long count trying to draw the Pirates offside. Hand off right side, and I don't know. It's going to be close. It's going to be very close because he was spun around as he was starting to jump. So the distance that he might have had if his body continued that way, but I guess my academic the officials has given us a first down signal. Point Dexter with the carry for the first down for Virginia Tech. Kumalai made the tackle. Ball is at the 45, first and 10. Hokies at their own 45-yard line. Sanders and Freeman, both dangerous, out wide left in the eye again. First and 10, Virginia Tech. Sanders in motion. Here's Hebron going right. Straight into a pirate at about the 48 or 49-yard line. Gain of about three or four. Tony Davis made the tackle. Hebron's going to be a tired young man tonight. He's carrying the football an awful lot here in this ball game. He's been the workhorse here today for Virginia Tech. Tries to go around in, cuts up field, and there's Davis again getting the first hit, stopping him for about a four-yard gain. Hebron's not been used as a pass receiver today, but four more catches, and he'll be the all-time receiver for a back in Virginia Tech history. Thomas Jones makes the tackle on him again. Hebron with the carry. And now here we are again with another key third down play coming up. Third down. And we'll call it four for Virginia Tech. Tough call here, Willie, third and four. Receivers left and right. Let's see what Frank Beamer does here on a third and four situation. Sanders is in motion. DeShazo on the option. Keeps it, and he's hemmed in and knocked down at the 48-yard line. And there's Zion Kumalai again, along with Thomas Jones. Kumalai's really playing a good game today. He really has been. Those linebackers, Kumalai for one and Davis for the other. You see the Shazo head down the line, makes the decision to cut up field. Kumalai on the bottom, Jones on the top, Davis coming in. They really made a great play to stop that third down run. So now the Hokies will have to punt it away. Colley is in to kick. Good snap. And he kicks this one way, way high. Letcher lets it go behind him. It bounces inside the 10, inside the 5, and the Hokies do a great job of covering that punt down to the one-yard line. Oh, what a great job by Virginia Tech special teams. And, Brian, they have got the Pirates backed up deep. Dropping back even further, close to the goal line. They stopped the ball about the five-yard line. You know, this series is close, 3-3 three, three tied going into the seventh meeting between Virginia Tech and East Carolina. And no team has ever won back-to-back -back years. East Carolina won last year in Blacksburg. Could this be Virginia Tech's time? They lead 17-16 here early in the fourth quarter. Well, that's the way this series has gone. As you mentioned, Brian has been back and forth in the home field has made no difference in this series either. And if the Pirates are to score here, they've got to go 99 yards. They're backed up at their own one. And Anderson's coming out firing. It's caught by Clayton Driver at the 15-yard line for a first down on that quick slant to Driver, who made that great touchdown catch in the third quarter. It's a great call. That's a good way to get away from your end zone. Anderson's back in his end zone, goes to Driver, makes a very nice catch. A slant pattern, a pattern they've thrown a number of times today, and one is obviously he has a lot of confidence in his receiver. And they threw it Tyrone Drakeford's way, and he has the big play in this ball game. that 40-yard interception return for a TD. First and 10 now at the 16 for East Carolina. Handoff, Junior Smith, big hole across the 20 to about the 22-yard line. Gain of six. Second down and four. 
Bird and Preston. P.J. Preston made the tackle on that. It's almost like a, a misdirection. You start off to your left with the offensive lineman going there. You see an opening, and he cuts back, picks up very good yardage on that. And Smith has done a good job with that misdirecting kind of running this afternoon. Second down and four. Man in motion. Anderson throws back. Caught at the 26-yard line. Caught by Peter Zofi. Melendez Bird. Made the tackle. Zofi, again, that possession receiver for East Carolina. Makes a lot of catches. He's got sure hands, and he came up with another first down for the Pirates. I think it's the greater part of those is that having great hands and making sure you come up with position for the first down if you get the completion. First down and 10. Ball is at the 27-yard line. Hokie 17, Pirates 16, 10.30 to play. Anderson gets away. Looking right, throws on the run. Really had nothing on the sideline. He throws it away. He made a good decision on that. He was being pressured, under pressure. His receiver being run into the sideline, just threw it out of bounds and not made a decision that could obviously have been costly to them. Sets up second down and 10. Pending for attack. It is second down. Here's Anderson rolling right. And look at the official trying to get away there. Look at his, he, hit he hit his, his arm, arm, didn't he? Yes, yes he did. <laughs> Makes it a little difficult to throw when the official is pushing your arm back towards you. Second and 10, Anderson steps up, throws into triple coverage, and it's picked off. Picked off by Tyrone Drakeford again to the 30, to the 25-yard line. Tyrone Drakeford with his second pass interception for Virginia Tech. To the 25-yard line of East Carolina, and Drakeford has been the man here for the Hokies in the second half. Anderson was hit right as he was throwing. Obviously, the ball was tipped. They do that tip drill very well. Drakeford, as you said, comes up with his second interception. There it is again. And Tyrone Drakeford comes up with it, and now East Carolina has put an awful lot of pressure on their defense here. First and 10. Virginia Tech at the Pirate 25-yard line. Hebron spins. He's knocked down and knocked down hard at the 28-yard line. Walter Scott back up in. 6'3", 253. Walter, a sophomore from Trenton, South Carolina, made the big hit. There you see the great crowd here today at Ficklin Stadium. Third largest crowd in the history of ECU football. 35,121 here today. They have plans to expand this stadium to 50,000 down the road. Going to have to to accommodate all the fans who want to come see the Pirates. Second down and 12. Rolling left to Shazo. Gets to the outside. Breaks the tackle to the 20 to the 10. To Shazo knocked out of bounds. Morris Foreman knocks him out on the near sideline. And the Hokies are really jacked up, Willie, following that interception. They really are. They didn't have much pressure at all on this play coming up across that defensive end because once he rolls out behind these two running backs, there's really no one there. Great running on his part, got a tremendous amount out of the play before he hit solidly there by Morris Foreman. But he did a, a great job on the play, but their defense has to attack them down the scrimmage better and not allow them to get to the ends that easily. First down and 10, just outside the 10. Hebron sweeping right. Pirates trying to catch him on the far sideline. They run him out of bounds. They spring it out well again to the eight yard line. He gained a couple. On Hebron with two yards, he probably ran about 20 yards to get those two, didn't he? <laughs> At least that, but you would expect East Carolina to realize they have to continue to do that. You have to spring it out, make him go east and west and not allow him to get down the field. And they're able to spring him out. He picks up a couple of yards but they cause them to run all the way to the sideline. They make the play, and that's what you have to do. You can't let them cut to the corner too quickly. 9.26 to go in the game. Hokie 17, Pirates 16, Virginia Tech knocking on the door. And off, Poindexter breaking tackles inside the five to the three-yard line. Ernie Lewis finally made the hit for East Carolina. Ernie Lewis came to East Carolina from Sanford, Florida with his High school teammate Jeff Blake, now the quarterback of the New York Jets. This is a fake toss handoff inside, straight up field, straight ahead play. And what is happening to the East Carolina defense is that they're finding themselves on the field a lot more against Tech the same way Tech was in the second quarter against East Carolina. Third and goal from the three yard line. Handoff left side, Kennedy into the end zone, touchdown Virginia Tech. Tony Kennedy takes it in from three yards out, and the Hokies take 
a 23 to 16 lead. Davis made the tackle, but too late. Kennedy, very strong, kept those legs churning here. Willie, and he takes it in. Yeah, he takes it in straight up field. I know Davis was sitting there, had a block on, and wasn't able to get any pads on Kennedy into the end zone. Third touchdown of this half for Virginia Tech. 23rd career touchdown for Tony Kennedy. That's sixth all time on the Virginia Tech list. And here's Williams for the extra point. It is up, it's good, but hold everything, we've got a flag down. See what the flag's all about here. Not good. Williams was seven of seven last week in extra point attempts. He's not missed one this year, and we'll see what the flag is about here. Stops the clock with 8.46 to go, and the Hokies leading 23-16. I believe they're going to assess the penalty on the kickoff. They've not put the point on the board, but they Illegal will. participation on the defense. Decline. It will be assessed on the kickoff. Pirates may have had 12 men on the field. Illegal participation. The score now. 24, 16, Hokies by 8. 8.46 to go. We're coming back right after this timeout. Virginia Tech capitalizing on East Carolina turnovers and the Hokies have a 24 to 16 lead Virginia Tech down 10 to 3 at halftime they put 21 points on the board here in this second half Tyrone Drakeford with two interceptions has been the big story for Virginia Tech he brought one back 40 yards for a touchdown Reeves is getting ready to kick it off Pirates have Foreman and Van Buren back deep there's Morris Letcher. Morris had nine catches last week. It's been a little more quiet today. He's not seen as much playing time. Got a wide out. Cedric Van Buren back there with him. And Reeves will kick it. It's a high kick. And it's Letcher at the five. Morris got away from one, ran into one of his home blockers, and then a walla. Hokies knocks him over at about the eight yard line. Good. Special teams play again by Virginia Tech. Andy Miller made the hit. That's one thing we haven't talked about, Willie. Virginia Tech's special teams today have really played well. Five plays, 25 yards. Following the interception, only took them a minute and 34 seconds to score. But their special teams have done a good job. Today. They really have, and that's one phase of the game that you always have to have working well for you because what that does is control what I would call the field position part of the game. As long as you can maintain great field position, as they really got ECU down to one yard line before it makes a great difference. Now the Pirates are back up at the eight. Anderson throwing, and it's caught by Crumpler at the 20 yard line. He's knocked out of bounds at the 25 yard line. Carlester Crumpler with the reception. Lassiter knocks him out of bounds on the far sideline. Pirates are probably going to throw a lot of passes down to the sideline to stop the clock. And there was a pass thrown, there was a flag thrown that play also. You see Anderson throwing out the Trumpler makes a good catch. Probably another face mask, Tony. No, that wasn't it. Apparently he was hit after he was out of bounds by the next defender. Yes. Second Hokie got him. That was Chad King. There's Crumpler. Boy, he's got all the physical tools. Played his high school football. Just a stone's throw here from Ficklin Stadium. Greenville Rose High School used to be located just a block down the street. 24-16. Hokies lead. Pirates moving with eight and a half to play in the game. Anderson pumps. Anderson's looking. He's going deep into double coverage, and it's overthrown. Clayton Driver, the intended receiver, and there was Drakeford back there again, along with Stacy Henley. I think they were looking for another miracle, Willie, from Clayton Driver there. <laughs> but Anderson can throw it a long way as... You saw in that last play, but I think in that kind of situation, you can have driver running deep like that, taking one of the defense or two defense backs with him, but you have other good receivers underneath. And what you want to do is to keep this drive alive, try to get seven points on the board, and give yourself a chance to be in position to win on your next possession. Second down. Possession. Ten. Trips right. Anderson throws. It's caught. Zofi makes the catch inside the 45 to the 43 yard line. 16 yards on that catch by Zofi, and boy, he covered up once he caught that ball. 
tackled by P.J. Preston and Kirk Alexander. The thing you said about Zoff is that he's a possession receiver. You mentioned like Belinikoff. Anderson delivers the ball. He catches the ball for you. He gets positive yardage. He allows you to keep moving downfield. And that's what you have to do in this kind of situation. Pirates had a guy like that last year, Hunter Gallimore. Had a terrific year. In fact, Hunter grew up in Blacksburg and then moved to Wilson, North Carolina. And Played his college football here at ECU. Anderson fakes, looks, it's caught, and there's Zofi again down to the 31-yard line. Another, well, the Pirates are pulling out all stops. Now they're throwing on every down. Yes, they are. Another first down. Anderson rolling out to his right. Zofi coming across on a crossing pattern from the tight end position. Guess another first down that keeps this drive alive. Well, even though Anderson's been picked off a couple of times, the Pirates keep throwing. With 7.45 to go, they're putting the heat on the Hokies again. Hokies 24, Pirates 16, 7.40 to go, and Anderson's looking to throw. Over the middle, it's caught again. They're throwing underneath, and Derek Batson to the 21-yard line. A gain of 11. They're picking them apart underneath here, Willing. But that's what you have to do. You want to create a problem for their defenders. You want to, to have Anderson drop back. He has Jackson underneath, and you make them come up to make the play. You force them to play your kind of game, and hope that opens up deeper for you as you continue with the drive. Pendleton. And Henley made the tackle. Pirates first and 10 at the Hokie 21-yard line. Batson in motion, looking, throwing to him, and it is caught or not at the 17-yard line. He made the reception. For a moment, I thought maybe he trapped it. Here's a good look. He had to go down to pick this one off the turf. Oh, good catch by Batson. Boy, Derek's played a big role today. Redshirt freshman out of Miami. Pirates recruit. Florida very heavily, especially down in that Miami area. Second down and six, gain of four. Pirates knocking on the board at the Hokie 17-yard line. Anderson looking left, drawn. Man's wide open. It's Sophie. Touchdown, Pirates. Hokies 24, Pirates 22, 6.36 to go. Zofi catches the touchdown pass, his first of the year, and Willie Day went down the field in an awful hurry. They really did, and that's what you really want to have work for you. You have great receivers. Zofi runs a nice pass. The ball almost gets away from him, catches his scores, gets him in position. Now they're only two points behind, but use your patterns underneath. You don't have to always go long. Well, let's see what the... Call is going to be here. What do you do? Do you kick one and make it 24-23 with 6.36 left? You've still got plenty of time. Or do you try and tie it here and tie it at 24-24 and go for two? Well, apparently you decide to go for it. <laughs> Steve Logan says, let's go, guys, and try and tie it right here. Pirates come to the line of scrimmage, and we've got a timeout call. Well, even if you miss here, Willie, you can still get the ball back and win the game with a field goal. Well, that's true because the way his offense is moving the ball, they have a lot of confidence in moving it around the different receivers. You have to feel that you can get it back again and have a chance to move down the field and score. You know, I know this is the first time you've seen East Carolina and Virginia Tech play, but believe me, these games have all been this way. They're just great games to sit and back and watch. And they are tremendously watch. exciting, but Anderson sets up, has enough time. Zofi ends up being wide open. I'm not sure who blew the coverage, but he makes a cut inside the middle of the field. No one is there. I'll tell you what, anytime fans come to watch this game, they certainly get their money's worth. There's Frank Beamer on the sideline. Frank and his wife, Cheryl, gave $50,000 to the university. And boy, is that ever refreshing. In a time of well, a lot of great selfishness in athletics, and Frank has really poured his heart and soul into this Virginia Tech football program. And now, folks, with 6.36 to go, they're on their feet at Ficklin Stadium. Hokies 24, Pirates 22, following the touchdown grab by Zolfi. Anderson has come to the sideline, talked to Logan. Pirates go for two to tie here. Anderson brings them out. Receivers left and right. Michael fakes to Van Buren, looking in the end zone, throws, it's up for grabs, and it is incomplete. Incomplete in the end zone. They tried to go to Carlester Crumpler at 6-6. A ball was batted around and fell to the turf. The two-point conversion goes by the boards, and Virginia Tech holds a 24-22 lead. He almost made a great catch. Anderson throws it high. He goes up, gets one hand on it, but it bobbles loose as he falls. At 6-6, they tried to throw it to Crumpler, and he had Alexander with him at 5-11. Almost made a terrific catch, a great effort on Crumpler's part. 
But the Pirate defense now, Willie, will have to come out here and hold Virginia Tech and hope to get that ball back and win the game on the last position. Well, the way they're playing, and it's, it's interesting watching how this game has flowed back and forth. In the early part, it was, it was Virginia Tech and East Carolina showed up in the second quarter and the third quarter, then Tech came back in the fourth. So it's interesting how this flow of emotion has gone back and forth. And right now, I think it's working with the East Carolina team's part. And we'll just see how well this defense has to play to give them the ball back. Well, since this series resumed in 1987, this game has certainly been characteristic of the other games in the series. Pirates have Cincinnati coming up. October 17th is going to be a long time before the Pirates are back here at Pickland Stadium in Southern Miss. Another televised game with ESPN and then Arkansas State. The final game, Ray Perkins will bring his Arkansas State in. Team in here on November the 14th. Pirates go on the road next week. There's the kick by Deacons. He pops it up to the 30-yard line. One of the up men for the Hokies takes it at the 35 to the 40-yard line. Virginia Tech's knocked down there at the 40, and they're going to have outstanding field position here as, again, Owens only kicked it to the 30-yard line. They really are, and as I said earlier, you start wondering whether that's the design situation, and if it isn't, you need to find yourself a kid who can kick it a little bit further because you don't want to be giving up that kind of field position for the one-yard line with teams being able to start a drive at that point. Pirates went 92 yards. Their last two drives have started at the one and at their own eight. They went 92 yards in six plays on that last scoring drive. Now it's first and 10 Hokies, 6.31 to go in the game. Virginia Tech leads 24-22. Hebron sweeping right. Gets away from one to the 50-yard line. He maybe picked up 10, maybe more. Jerry Dillon and Greg Floyd knock him out of bounds. Thomas Jones was also there, and Hebron got around that corner again, Willie. They're kicking the end out pretty well. They're they really are. He picked up 13 yards from that play. Starts up field, cuts out to his right, and just showed great speed getting outside. And the defensive end has to go upfield further to force him inside because of that kind of speed, once they turn the corner, they pick it up 9 to 10 yards out of the 13 yards for Hebron. First and 10. Hokies at the Pirate 47. Burke is in motion. The Shazo handoff right side. Hebron again to about the 46. Did a good job that time. Let's go down to Brian Bailey. Okay, thanks, Jeff. One of the keys in this East Carolina offense, they've got all kinds of speed, but they also have guys that can catch the football as possession receivers. Last year, Hunter Gallimore fulfilled that role. This year, Peter Zofi, and he got the touchdown. All you have to do is catch the ball and hang on. Sounds easy, but really it's not, is it? No, not, especially in this critical situation with 36,000 fans just about screaming. Got to keep your concentration. Second down and nine. Burke in motion. DeShazo the option. Here's the pitch. Hebron catches. Going to the far side. I broke a tackle. And then at the 42-yard line, he's hit and drop. Davis and Render did a good job that time. Render came over. Knocked him out of bounds. They did an outstanding job because Hebron already has 141 yards rushing before this run. And with the toss left-handed out to him, they just showed great speed. Davis comes in, finishes them off. This has been Tony Davis's best game in a Pirate uniform, and it's third down and four. Big, big play here. 5.45 to go in the game. Hokies 24, Pirates 22. Virginia Tech to the line of scrimmage, third and four. Burke is in motion. Possession play, Tech. DeShazo, play action, run and right, in trouble. Bernard Carter's after him, throwing on the run, throws it out of bounds. East Carolina should get the ball back with over five minutes to go. Ernie Lewis and Bernard Carter playing good defense for the Pirates on that play. Watch Carter stay after DeShazo here. Here he comes. He's had to throw that one away, Willie. It really did, and that created, Carter created enough of a problem that it took more time. He had to throw it away, and it gives his offense a chance to now get this ball back with about 5.38 left here in the fourth quarter. And again, it may be very poor field position for East Carolina. Colley looks to punt it away. Letcher's back deep at the eight. There's the kick. It's a high kick. Letcher is going to catch it, fair catch it, at the six-yard line. You know, that looks easy, but boy, there was some pressure on Morris Fletcher there, wasn't there? <laughs> yeah, I can't imagine doing that. That was something you always wonder about from a playing standpoint. We're back. 5.30 to play. Hokies 20. There's the story. Virginia Tech 24, East Carolina 22, and only 5.30 to play. 
The Pirates backed up again at their own six-yard line. Michael Anderson at quarterback is back to pass. Looking left, throws, it's picked off by Virginia Tech at the 10-yard line. This time it's Stacy Henley with the interception to the East Carolina six-yard line. Virginia Tech with their third interception here in the second half, and this time it's Henley with a big interception. And let's take a look. Anderson is hit right as he starts to throw. Allows Henley to get in position, makes a very fine interception, not able to keep his feet. If he had that, it would have been a touchdown right there. But as you say, that's the third interception of this second half, and they've gotten touchdowns on both of the others, and the defense has to really keep them to a point of only getting a field goal to give themselves a chance to win this ball game. First and goal at the seven. Poindexter to the five-yard line. Gained a couple. Tony Davis made the tackle. Second and goal, Virginia Tech at the five-yard line. Well, the Hokies now with a golden opportunity to drive a nail into the Pirate coffin here. You're right about that. It appears that Anderson does a lot better when he drops right back. He's throwing his quick slant patterns possession kind of patterns, but when he has to have more time, make some decisions that obviously has not worked well for them in the second half. Power eye this time for Virginia Tech. Second down and goal from the five yard line. Here's Kennedy sweeping right with flags down inside the five to the four yard line. Tony Kennedy. Greg Floyd made the tackle and let's see what the flags are all about here. Flag on the play. If the Pirates can keep the Hokies out of the end zone, it would be a monumental effort by the defense and still give them a chance to win this football game. There's still plenty of time with 4.44 to go. Pirates have two timeouts left, and Virginia Tech has one timeout left. Here's the official call. Illegal motion on the offense. Five-yard penalty, still second down. Cross the hoax, five yards. The illegal motion on Virginia Tech. Now we see three backs in the backfield. Fumble on the snap. DeShazo picks it up. He's rolling right. He's looking. Nobody's open. He has to run the ball out of bounds. Bernard Carter chased him again out of bounds. Bernard's been on his heels the whole day. Carries the football out of bounds for Virginia Tech. He was driven out of bounds. Ball on the turf. Carter of ECU. It is third down. Shazo didn't have anybody to throw to. Good decision on his part. Hokies back to the 13-yard line. Third down and goal at the 13. 24 Hokies, 22 Pirates, and 4.35 to go. Power eye this time. Big play for DeShazo and company. Hand off, left side, ball carrier down to the 6. Down to the 6-yard line. It's Hodges out of Yonkers, New York. Fred Walker made the tackle. The Hodges the big straight pullback. up the field. He gets a handoff from DeShazo and was able to get them down to the six-yard line, but at least the defense does a great job in stopping them here and allowing their offense the chance, if this field goal is made, to still have a chance to win this game with a, another long drive, if that's the case. Well, let's see what Frank Beamer wants to do here. They've got a big powwow going on on the Virginia Tech sideline. Frank with his entire assistant coaching staff huddling up. And they're taking a time out here to discuss the strategy with 3.48 to play. Hokies 24, Pirates 22. It's a fourth and goal situation at the six yard line. If they kick the field goal here to go up by five, 27 to 22. Obviously the Pirates couldn't win it with a field goal. They would have to win it with a touchdown here in the closing minutes. So many of these games have come down to the very last play, and it looks like we're right in that same situation again here today. Well, it appears that they always like to have exciting games to keep the fans coming back, and if that's the case, this is the first one that I've seen. It's definitely been all that has been stated prior to the game. No question about that. Let's go down to Brian Bailey, get his thoughts here in crunch time. Brian? Okay, Jeff, one of the obvious keys, the turnovers, but you have to think back. The Pirates have had terrible field position. One time it looked like from here they were on the five. They're actually on the one-yard line. They started at the eight-yard line and the six. They've had just awful field position most of the end of the third, early in the fourth quarter. 
trying to edge it out. Right now, if the Tech gets the field goal, they'll still be within striking distance with a touchdown. And the Hokies are going to go for three here. Ryan Williams is in. This is a chip shot. They'll spot it down at the 12. It will be a 22-yard attempt for Ryan Williams. Right in the middle of the field, the straight-on kicker. There's the snap. Ball down. Kick is up. And the kick is good by Ryan Williams. Hokies 27, Pirates 22, and 3.46 to play in Greenville, North Carolina. Well, Willie, there's no question now what the Pirates have to do. Field goal does them no good. They have to come down here and stick it in the end zone. Well, one thing we know, they can do that. They just have to maintain their composure, work on a good plan, but not one where they really have to hurry up because as we noticed before, they went 92 yards in about three minutes and 10 seconds. So it's not a problem if, if they have to start deep in their own in area of the field to be able to get the length of the field in a short period of time. They should get better field position on this kickoff than what they've had in both the third and the fourth quarter because Foreman and Van Buren are pretty good return people unless Reeves just bangs this thing totally out of the end zone here. But their field position for East Carolina in the second half has been an absolute nightmare. Reeves will kick it off. And Morris Foreman, who did a great job last week returning kicks, is not out there, in fact. It looks like Morris Letcher has been sent back. Yes, Morris Letcher is out there. Van Buren and Letcher are back deep. So Foreman's out of there. They put Letcher in there to return his kick. Field position critical on this kickoff with 3.46 to go, and Reeves will put it away. High end over end kick. Letcher's going to run it down and get it at the four. He'll return it. 5, 10, 15, 20. Letcher straight up the middle to the 28-yard line, and the Pirates have some decent operating room now to begin a drive. Downfield, Virginia Tech again playing well on their special teams here today. Covered that one well. Downfield for the Hokies was number 39, Andy Miller, who made the tackle. Well, East Carolina throws the ball. Willie, I guess you could say they live and die with the pass. We've seen them live on it here a little bit today, and we've seen them die a little bit here today. Yeah, you're right about that, and I think they're very confident they have the ability to live with it. Here's Anderson. He's had a rough second half. He's going to try and rally the Pirates to victory here on this offensive drive. Handoff left side, Van Duren is hit and dropped to the 30-yard line, only a gain of one. It'll bring up second down and nine yards to go. Now for some reason, that's a rather surprising play on first Wasn't down. <laughs> I would have thought that Anderson would be dropping back, trying to move it down the field in a little bit different manner than having it on the ground with Van Buren. Rusty Pendleton made the tackle. Don Davis was there. That one surprised us all. Second down and nine. Wide left. Dia Hicks. Wide right, Morris Letcher, Batson's in motion. Second and nine, Anderson's back. Pump faking, looking. Can't find anybody, he'll run, and he'll get tackled at the 32-yard line. Good pass coverage by Tech. Jerome Preston, who's really played well up front. The big senior from Martinsville, Virginia, makes the tackle. Yeah, the Prestons have played well all day. You see the initial pressure forces Anderson back up field. The tackle is made. He gains a couple of yards. Uh, but that's not what you want to have happen on your first two plays in what is going to be probably your last possession of the game. Third down and six. Big play for the Pirates here at their own 33. Hokies lead 27-22. Anderson dumps it over the middle and is caught for the first down. Cut for the first down to the 45-yard line. Cedric Van Buren with a big catch for the Pirates, the senior out of Charleston, South Carolina. Van Buren comes out of the backfield, circles to his right, makes a nice catch, fights off a couple of tacklers, and picks up yardage almost to midfield at the 46-yard line to give them a little bit better position to try to continue down the field with two minutes, 13 seconds left in this ball game. The Pirates pulled so many miracles last year right here at Ficklin Stadium. Can they do it again today? Here's Anderson rolling left, pumping, throwing. Man open, it's caught at the 45-yard line. It's Clayton Driver struggling to the 43. But you would have hoped that no, Clayton, Batson. You would have hoped that Derek Batson got out of bounds on that. He caught the ball near the sideline. You have to try to save as much time on the clock as you can. The decision is to catch it. Now step out. He tried to step back in. Couldn't get much more yardage but that costs you time on the clock. Well, a good point, and the freshman out of Miami 
making the reception. And the Pirates pick up the first down. They did stop the clock momentarily to move the chains. First and 10, ball at the 44, Batson's in motion. Anderson's looking, still looking, still looking, throws. Man is open, it is caught at the 29-yard line. Zofi, I tell you, Anderson is cool under pressure here, Willie. He's looking off his primary receiver and picking up some secondary guys. And he tends to do a lot better when he's dropping straight back, having a chance to maintain good vision of the field. You'll see him drop back, slide a little bit. Zofi comes across from his left to his right. Great presence, great hands. Tends to appear to catch anything that's thrown to him. So he's going to be a big hit around here in Greenville. First down and 10, ball at the Hokey 29. 128 to go. Hokies 27, Pirates 22. Anderson's rolling right. Looking, looking, throwing. It's knocked down at the line of scrimmage, incomplete. He'll bring up second down and 10. Last year, East Carolina, the final 46 seconds of a game, defeated Pittsburgh right here at Ficklin Stadium that propelled them on into the top 20. And on up the top 20 ladder is Jeff Blake scored with 46 seconds to go and a two-point conversion to win that game. And this is the kind of game you like to have. You can not ask for a more exciting finish coming down the stretch. A minute 22 left, down by two, moving the ball. The defenders trying to do everything they can to stop you. It comes the essence of what a great afternoon in this fall happens to be. Here's Zolfi with a catch to the 20-yard line on second down and 10. Zolfi takes it to the 20-yard line. He's a couple of yards short of the first down. East Carolina still has two timeouts remaining. And he ran the pattern this time from the right-hand side of the formation. Most of the other times he was coming from the left to the right, but Zofi catches everything almost that Anderson has thrown him today. Inside a minute, 54 seconds. It's coming down to the last play of the game again, folks, in the series. Third down and two. Here's Anderson looking over the middle. Throws. Man out there. Caught by Kepler. He's in. Touchdown, Pirates. Carlester Crumpler Jr. Touchdown East Carolina. Pirates 28, Hokies 27, 42 seconds to go. What a catch by the junior from Greenville, North Carolina. Anderson is back, and let's watch it right here. Took a good look, Willie, and he held on. And the great thing about it when you have a big tight end, 6'6", 245, if you hit him one yard away from the goal line, you're in a lot of trouble. He's probably going in. But that's just an outstanding play. And as you said, last year they had many games like this during that outstanding season. Carl Esther Crumpler Jr. with a touchdown. East Carolina, 28-27. They're going to go for two here to try and put a three-point lead on the board. Here's Anderson looking left, still looking left. Throws, it's caught. Two-point conversion by East Carolina, two-point conversion to Clayton Driver in the end zone. Pirates 30, Hokies 27, 42 seconds to play. That forces Virginia Tech now to go to the end zone to win this ball game. A field goal would only tie here. Great I'll play. tell you, that passing game has been something to watch. It's been, it's been fantastic. It's just great to see how cool he is. But there's Anderson back in the pocket, delivers it to Crumpler. Three yards from the goal line with that kind of size he gets in. He might have said he might have touched his butt down before he got there, <laughs> but he was into the end zone for the touchdown. All Carlesker did is just put that big 6'6 body out in front of him, and he just kind of lumbered and laid on <laughs> into the end zone. And Anderson is the man of the hour, and so is Crumpler here. And they are on their feet at Ficklin Stadium. This place is rocking. With 42 seconds to go, the Pirates have stormed back with that passing game. East Carolina 30, Virginia Tech 27, with 42 seconds to go. Jeff, are you sure you didn't strip this game like this? I mean, you, <laughs> you laid it out to have this kind of fantastic finish? Well, I tried to tell you, they always come down to the last play. And believe me, this thing's not over yet. This thing is not over yet. There have been too many surprises. It's amazing East Carolina has been able to come back from those three interceptions in this second half, and they've got the lead. Deke Owens will kick it to the left side. That time he got a better foot into it. At the 6, 10, 15, 20, Hebron knocked down at the 25-yard line. Six seconds go off the clock. We've got 36 seconds to go. Hokies, no timeouts. And, Brian, this place is going nuts. 
It's exactly right. You know, Bill Lewis preached this for three years that you have to learn to win a game on the last play. Steve Logan has said it now for two games that he wants to be in the position to win the game on the last play. Hey, it's coming down to the last play now. It's coming down to the last play of the game. They preach it and they preach it here at East Carolina. First and 10, ball at the 25. DeShazo is back. Here comes Myers. He got away. DeShazo's looking. He's going to throw it up for grabs. And it is picked off by Greg Grandison again. Grandison was the hero last year at Lane Stadium in Blacksburg. And he picks it off at the 25-yard line. Grandison out of Pensacola, Florida, the leading candidate for the Jim Thorpe Award as the top defensive back in America, makes the big play for East Carolina. The Shazo made a great move getting away from pressure, threw it as far as he could, but Grandison, having good presence on the field, goes high, catches the ball at the apex, and gets out of bounds with it. Doesn't worry about trying to get upfield, knowing that all he had to do was to secure the ball, and East Carolina has a tremendous finish here today against Virginia Tech. 26 seconds to go. Pirates 30, Hokies 27. And these Pirate fans are thinking that the dream stays alive. The miracle may still be here at East Carolina University. The 11-1 season last year, the number nine national ranking, the New Year's Day Bowl win over NC State in the Peach Bowl. It didn't look good last Saturday night, but the Pirates have gotten their season back on track. Clock is going to tick off, and as was the case last year in Blacksburg. East Carolina comes from behind to beat Virginia Tech for the second game in a row in this series. They count it off, it's over. Pirates 30, Virginia Tech 27. What a comeback by East Carolina in this fourth quarter. We're back at Ficklin Stadium right after this timeout. Today's East Carolina Virginia Tech game has been presented by Golden Corral. Great taste, great prices, and great value. By Carolina Telephone, putting our customers light years ahead. By Wachovia, welcome to personal banking. Welcome to Wachovia. By John Deere and your local John Deere dealers. Nothing runs like a deer. By CarQuest, you'll find it at CarQuest. And by Pepsi, gotta have it. Brian Bailey is on the sideline. He has one of the stars of the game today, Carlester Crumpler Jr. Brian, take it away. Okay, thanks, Jeff. Carlester Crumpler last week, a couple of drop passes. I know you were very frustrated. This week you come out and you make the game-winning catch. And I know you're very full of emotion right now. Yes, uh, you know, I, all I did was pray all week. My family supported me. My teammates were behind me. And, uh, you know, they just said, just bring out the crumb that we all know. And, uh, you know, that's what I did. Talk about the winning touchdown. It was a play called 60-pick uh, hot. What I'm supposed to do is 11-yard flag to the corner of the end zone. And I just said, forget it. I'm just running straight up here, and I turned around, and Mike was throwing the ball to me. And uh, I just made a play like I've always, you know, been doing in practices and scrimmages that we've been having. You really got hit on the play and you were able to go on in for the touchdown. Well, I, it's, it's kind of hard for a small DB to bring down somebody over 240 pounds. And I, and I feel that I run hard. All our players do, you know, and it takes a couple of guys to bring me down, you know, and I'm always going to fight for that extra yard. Okay, Crump, nice catch and congratulations to the Pirates. Thanks. Carlos Trump Jr. with a catch to win it for East Carolina, 30 to 27, the final. Back to you up in the booth, Jeff. Okay, Brian, thank you very much. I know he's got a proud papa, too, Carlos Crumpler Sr., who works with me usually on our radio network here at East Carolina University, and I know he had to be emotional on that one. And Willie, in this second half, the Pirates continued to overcome adversity. Anderson threw three interceptions, and usually that's the kiss of death, but they were able to come back and win this ball game. It really is, and you really start to feel watching this team play that they believe that they can get it done if they have any reasonable amount of time. Exactly. And even though they had two fumbles in the first half, they continue to stay in the game. You had 
three interceptions, one for a touchdown. You continue to stay in the game. And I thought it was interesting listening to Carlesta Crumple on that last point he made because he said he didn't run his right pattern. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but he still was able to score that which was a winning touchdown. Let's take a look now at the interception that really sealed it for East Carolina. And again, it was Greg Grandison, and DeShazo was under some heavy heat here. Yes, he really was, and he was just trying to get position to try to throw it as far as he could. But as you said, Grandison comes over, goes up for the ball. You're always taught, catch it at his apex, make sure no one else has a chance to go after it. Gets right out of bounds, and that seals it for East Carolina. And uh, for Greg, that was also a smart play. He got out of bounds, didn't try and run the ball up the field, and maybe fumble it and give it back to Virginia Tech. Well, what a comeback it was for the East Carolina Pirates here today. They stormed back in the fourth quarter, shades of last year and the miracle season, and they win it today over Virginia Tech, 30 to 27. With that victory, the Pirates now go to one win and one loss on the season. Virginia Tech, likewise, all even up at one and one on the season. We hope you enjoyed it. We know we did. This is Jeff Charles speaking for our entire crew, saying so long from Green.